oceans remain some of the most mysterious places on our planet. Beneath the depths are untold secrets waiting to be discovered. Every year people manage to capture strange photographs, leaving those who took them confused and wanting answers. Although the majority of these eventually get answers, there's a fair amount that remains a mystery. This interesting photo was recently shared to Facebook, and it shows a large structure that appears to be rising out of the ocean. This immediately caused a variety of different theories to be put forward by those who saw the images, with them ranging from it being the mythical Atlantis to it being a cruise ship or even that of a ghost ship. I talked with the individual who shared the images and they revealed the following details. The photograph was captured on the 7th of August at 9.37 p.m. in 2016. This is the correct time and date that can be seen on the top of the photo. We had left our last port of Lisbon earlier that day at around 5 p.m., so we were in the Atlantic on the edge of the Bay of Biscay. It was my son Tom Eleven at the time who noticed it. We were on our balcony port side just doing what we normally did each night. I was looking for dolphins as we'd been all around the Med and other members of my family had seen them but I hadn't, so I was on the lookout for them. This is the first time that I've posted any information on these photographs and I'm amazed at the variety of replies that have been sent. Some suggested that perhaps I messed with the photos, but that definitely didn't happen as I am rubbish with tech. Interestingly, I even had two individuals that ended up calling each other out as one said Atlantis and the other one said that he called it first. End quote. As of right now, people are still undecided on what the photos show. There's some that have said you can see something mysterious like a ghost ship, a mirage, or even Atlantis, while others suggested that it could be something like another ship. And the reason you can't see it is because it's going over the curvature of the Earth. This is a phenomenon that is known and that researchers say is behind many ghost ship tales. When a ship sinks beyond the curvature of the Earth, it gives off the illusion that it's floating in the air and that the body of it vanishes. When in reality, you just can't see it from your perspective. However, this does usually happen when ships are quite far off in the distance. And as some have pointed out, it looks as if this object is relatively close to the cruise ship. This phenomenon is also normally seen when people are at near enough the same level as the object in the distance, and in this case, the individual was near the top of the cruise ship. It's for these reasons that others decided to put forward different theories to try and explain what was seen. One person said the following about the structure, it might be an oil rig out in the middle of the ocean or a prism for anomalies. End quote. I talked with another person who said they think it might be Atlantis. They said the following, Atlantis is a mythical city that's been talked about for years. It's no secret that the ancient city has been elusive and that researchers haven't been able to track down its true location. What we're seeing here is Atlantis rising from the depths. I think this man may have captured the city in all its details. Others have said the image is just another ship, but I don't believe this. I think the ocean is home to many secrets and what we're seeing here is the ancient city. End quote. The most damning evidence against the existence of Atlantis is the clear lack of physical remnants of the so-called city. Surely if such a powerful island nation were to exist, then records, pieces, or artifacts from such a place would still be around somewhere, just waiting to be found. In November 2018, a British satellite firm named Merlin Burrow stated in 2018 that they had discovered images that could show remnants of the long-lost city. Marlon Burroughs points towards supposed ruins that lie in the Don Anan National Park in Spain. According to their claims, there is evidence of concrete, which could be between 10,000 and 12,000 years old. After first being written about by the philosopher Plato, the city of Atlantis has garnered a reputation of being in control of advanced ancient technology, which was subsequently lost to time in the ocean. Because of this, efforts to find the supposed lost city have grown in frequency, with many people across the globe trying to find its location. Bruce Blackburn, a representative from Merlin Borough, stated, We've got a body of evidence that we've presented, and we have a whole host of proof points, and we are quite happy for people to take a viewpoint. We've released the information, and we've got some films. And we accept that there will be people who think it isn't true. End quote. It's interesting when these types of photographs are taken. It makes us question what could be hiding under the dams. Although scientists have done a great job at unraveling some of the ocean's biggest secrets, it's fair to say there's many more waiting to be unraveled. In conclusion, mainstream scientists have even admitted themselves that the oceans are mysteries in their own right. A large portion of our oceans still remain unexplored, and it's anyone's guess as to what could be lurking in the dams. So far, scientists have discovered over 242,000 marine species. However, it's been estimated that every year over 2,000 new oceanic species are discovered. 
With the oceans being so vast and widespread, it's likely that scientists and researchers will be making discoveries well into the future. Scientists have done a great job at answering some of the ocean's mysteries, but it's important to keep an open mind about what could be laying in the dams. Who knows where the next discovery will lead us? Before we continue, I have a small request for you. We've created a new channel where we upload content related to old, historical ruins and interesting events. So, if you're interested, kindly subscribe to my channel, Decoverize, for daily interesting videos and show some love in the comments. I'll read every one of your comments. The link is in the description. Okay, let's continue. Antarctica is a mystery. Explorers and mappers of the last few hundred years have worked hard to find nearly every piece of land and uncharted area from around the world. Further advancements in modern technology such as satellite imaging and other innovations have also provided humans with the means to see almost every place on Earth with accurate precision. This in turn caused a variety of strange discoveries to be brought to light. And one of these is a strange discovery that was made in Antarctica using Google Earth. Various UFO sites have claimed that a UFO crashed into the Antarctic snow and that it can be seen surrounded by tanks. When the photographs were shared, people started to give their opinions on what the object is. Some claim that the object in the snow is different to the tanks that can be seen next to it and that it does look like the tanks were sent there to investigate what's going on. The object looks to be disc in shape and one thing that confused those who have seen the images is the presence of the tanks. With some saying that if the tanks weren't there, this could be ruled out as perhaps a piece of snow or ice. But due to them being there, it adds an air of mystery. Some went on to say that at the end of the skid, you can see an unidentified object. And again, this does look to be disc-shaped. For years, there's been rumors that UFOs had been discovered embedded in the ice at Antarctica and that this is one of the reasons why there's a lot of activity going on down there. UFO researchers have gone on to say that the high military presence here comes down to there being a lot of UFO sightings in the area, saying that bases were built purely to investigate these sorts of claims. As of right now, though, the government has never admitted to finding UFOs in Antarctica and say the 10 claims of there being UFOs in this region is just stories. When people zoomed in on the supposed tanks, though, some noted that you couldn't see any tire tracks in the snow and said that due to their weight, you would easily be able to see tracks. However, UFO researchers hit back at these claims and said that a small snowstorm could easily cover them up, saying that it would only take a few hours for the tracks to be hidden underneath a new batch of snow. One UFO researcher said the following about the object. I think that it measures at least 200 feet in diameter. It could be even more looking at it compared to the tanks. There's a reason why those tanks are there and I think they're collecting this UFO. We've heard many stories about governments being interested in these crafts. And I think this is one of those cases where we're seeing a real downed UFO. End quote. However, not everyone got on board with the idea of this being an unidentified flying object. This person said the following, the problem with these types of photographs is that although they're impressive, they're not super clear. So it could be anything. I'll admit that the objects near to this alleged UFO is strange. But again, these could just be anomalies created in the snow. If I had to guess, I would say this UFO is just a hole in the snow. And that it's giving off the illusion of it being a craft. I don't think there's anything to see here. End quote. Interestingly, this isn't the only alleged UFO crash that has been found in Antarctica. This one made the rounds on social media when it was discovered, even going on to feature on various mainstream websites. When first looking at the images, it does look like a typical crash site. You can see a large object covered in snow with a trail behind it, and this immediately caused the UFO community to point out that this could be a possible crash site. Over the years, there's been various reports of unidentified flying objects that have allegedly made contact with our planet. It also fueled more speculation as, according to many theorists, Antarctica is home to many mysterious happenings. The original photograph was found via Google Earth and shows an area known as South Georgia Island. It quickly spread across various websites with everyone giving their opinion on what they thought the object could be. There's even some that have now come forward and said that the object looks similar to a Muamua, the mysterious space rock that was discovered in our solar system back in 2017. People were quick to say that this photo could be the real deal. However, others weren't so sure. One user said that if you zoom out, there's a mountain really close by, going on to say that what most likely happened is some ice fell from the mountain and skidded in the snow. This left behind a trail that made it look like a crash. 
The user then went on to say what's the most likely event, an unidentified flying object crashing to the ground or some ice becoming dislodged from a nearby mountain. Geologist Richard Waller from Keele University got involved and said that this explanation is the most likely one. Ferva saying that it's not aliens but Earth just being Earth. He said the following, it looks to me as though this feature is related to a large avalanche from a nearby mountain. Part of a hanging glacier appears to have collapsed. You can see the avalanche debris at the foot of the slope and this could be a large block of ice that has traveled further as a consequence. The tracks show that it's sliding over a snow-covered glacier before it comes to a rest. Although some didn't accept this explanation, saying that you can clearly see it's a craft, many said that this explanation explains what's happened. However, as some have pointed out, just because this one event got explained, it doesn't mean the rest gets up. For the last few decades, there's been various stories of people seeing giant crass crash landing and that many believe that Antarctica is a hotspot for these types of reports. Every year, strange stories come out of Antarctica saying that a new UFO or crash scene has been discovered and as with most of them, people are divided. This one, though, is said to be one of the more interesting ones as it's one of the clearest images we have and because there's allegedly tanks guarding it. Uncovering the secrets of the past continues to be a fascination for many. The pyramids are some of the most impressive structures we have on our planet. They've survived the test of time and have caused a lot of theories to be put forward in recent years to how they were built. Going back several years ago, someone uploaded a video of them traveling to Egypt. In the video, we can see they sent a remote control car within the Great Pyramid, and they said they found something that the government would want to keep a secret. This interested many and it was soon revealed that a website was set up called NowIKnow.com, which had on it a countdown until the big reveal was going to happen. The short video shows a car being sent down a small tunnel in one of the pyramids and as it gets deep inside, many strange symbols and markings can be seen. But the most interesting discovery is said to be a secret chamber that shows a tall figure inside. When the video was uploaded, many different theories were put forward to try and explain it, with some saying that the footage is real and shows some of the secret tunnels within the pyramid, while others said the video was a hoax and was likely a viral stunt. Regardless, one thing this video did do is get people talking. The uploader cut the video and said that more interesting discoveries will be revealed if they don't meet their demands, one of which was that they wanted to be paid $5 million for the video. The following statement was put on the website. You have 30 days to pay me $5 million or I will upload the rest of the video. End quote. The rest of the video didn't get uploaded and whoever was behind the stunt suddenly went quiet again, sparking more out their theories for what happened to the individual and why the long version of the video was never uploaded. Some even suggested that due to the sensitive nature of the finding, he may have been silenced by the Egyptian authorities. While others said it was a scam and because they didn't get their money, they just left it. One person said the following, unlike most, I don't think it's some viral marketing. I think that this could actually be the real deal. However, what I suspect is that they made the RC car with a plan. They basically knew exactly what they was going to do from the beginning and was so confident they was going to find something interesting that they filmed it all from building the RC car until his arrival at the pyramids. This indicates that he was there before and found the shaft at least. However, how could he have known he would find something interesting beforehand? Maybe his RC car would have run into a brick wall that would make all the filming, the RC car building, etc. a waste. End quote. Well, another person said this. Even if the video is fake, I think the pyramids are hiding some secrets. I still think there's many undiscovered rooms and tunnels underneath the pyramids themselves. And I've heard Egyptologists talk about there being a huge complex underneath the structure. Regardless of whether the video is real or not, the bigger question here is what are the pyramids hiding? End quote. Well, this person said this. If you watch the video, it does look legit. I've read some theories that the individual worked in the area and were tipped off about there being undiscovered shafts in the pyramids. It's obvious that some officials are ignoring evidence and fail to further investigate these claims. I've even read that you may have been a tour guide in the area and wanted to show the world what really lied within the pyramids. End quote. In recent years, many interesting discoveries have been made in and around the pyramids. One most notable ancient society seen as the cradle of human civilization were the advancements made by the ancient civilization of Egypt and over the years some mysterious discoveries have been made inside one of their greatest creations. Recently scientists made the discovery that electromagnetic properties exist in the great this could mean that nanoparticle designs could be designed for highly efficient sensors and solar cells. 
The scientists and researchers have discovered that the giant pyramid concentrates electric and magnetic energy into its internal chambers. This is located below a space and it creates a pocket of higher energy. As many of you know, the pyramids have inspired many legends over the years and some think the Egyptians were way ahead of their time. One of the biggest questions is how did the civilization build such impressive structures? Some of the world's greatest minds have said it's perhaps one of the greatest ancient mysteries. Dr. Andre said the following, Egyptian pyramids have always attracted great attention. We as scientists were interested in them as well. So we decided to look at the Great Pyramid's radio waves. The international research team noticed that the shape of the Great Pyramid of Giza and its ability to focus electromagnetic energy. The team then created a model of the pyramid as they wanted to measure its electromagnetic response. By doing these studies, the team was able to see how the wave energy was being scattered or absorbed by the pyramid. The scientists have said that the ancient Egyptians were not aware of this design. However, some have questioned how the ancient Egyptians would have been able to do this by mistake. The pyramid is special though, as mentioned it's able to focus wave energy through its core. It seems that every year researchers find out more about the pyramids. The Great Pyramid is located at the center of the landmass of the Earth. The four faces of the pyramid are slightly concave, and it's thought that this is the only pyramid to have been built this way. The centers of the four sides are indented with an extraordinary degree of precision. This means that it actually forms an eight-sided pyramid. What's bizarre, though, is that this can only be seen from the sky. What many have pointed out is why can we only see this when you're above the pyramid? What use would this have in a time when air travel was not possible? Some researchers have also said this wouldn't have been done by mistake and that it hasn't caused the overall structure to suffer in any way. The International Space Station is one of the most impressive things we've built. For thousands of years, early humans would have looked up to the sky and wondered what was up there. Fast-forwarding humans have reached a point where we've been able to place an advanced laboratory above our planet, giving researchers and scientists the opportunity to conduct important tests in a non-gravity environment helping us to understand things like what these sorts of surroundings do to the human body and how we can overcome them. These types of tests are important as scientists and businessmen are looking at colonizing other planets, with Mars being the one that's currently being eyed up for human colonization. It's incredible to think that within many of our lifetimes we could see humans walk on other planets, something that only a few years ago seemed impossible. NASA said the following about the International Space Station on their website. The space station is Earth's only microgravity laboratory. This football filterized platform hosts a plethora of science and technology experiments that are continuously being conducted by crew members. All are automated. Research aboard the orbiting laboratory holds benefits for life back on Earth as well as for future space exploration. The space station serves as a testbed for technologies and allows us to study the impacts of long-term spaceflight to humans supporting NASA's mission to push human presence further into space. End quote. There's others, though, who state that there's more going on around the International Space Station than what we're being told about. And this has to do with the countless unidentified flying objects enclosed to the ISS. Although NASA have said that these objects are nothing more than space debris and that every single one of these have been explained by NASA scientists, there's a group of people who believe that the International Space Station often gets visited by UFOs and that these crafts are not space debris as explained by scientists. This in turn has caused various UFO researchers to watch the life eats in the hopes of catching one of these crafts. Interestingly, going back in 2015, a mysterious object was seen close to one of the International Space Station cameras, and it immediately caused theorists online to question what this giant object was. A UFO researcher by the name of Toby Lumpf was watching the live stream when he noticed a large object come into view. Thinking on the spot, he quickly took a screenshot of the object, and it was lucky that he did as it was said the live stream quickly dropped once this object came into view. UFO researchers who watch the live cameras have said this is a common occurrence. This has caused researchers to say this is the link's officials will go to keep us from knowing the truth. Even those who haven't open-minded the subject have said it's strange when the life he drops from one of these objects comes into view. And if anything, it doesn't help NASA as it only causes theories to run wild. Some news stations tried to reach out to NASA and get their comments on what they thought the object was. But they reported that they never got an answer from the space agency. This is one of the more well-known photographs of an alleged UFO seen close to the space station with believers saying that the craft in question shows a large triangular object. 
a craft that is well known in UFO circles as being one of the most commonly sighted UFOs. These crafts are described as being able to hover in the sky without making a sound and when they need to leave the area they do so at an extremely high speed. Researchers debate who these crafts belong to with some saying that they are the new stealth line currently used by the military or some say this can't be the case as some of these crafts have been seen close to the moon. One skeptic, however, said the following about the object, although at first glance this does look like a UFO, I think the more likely answer here is that we're looking at a glitch. There's been many times when I've been watching the live cams and I've seen something strange. However, this doesn't mean we should all jump straight to UFOs. There's so many other things it could be. For example, meteors that are entering the Earth's atmosphere. Lights from the International Space Station itself. Space debris and other natural explanations. People have and will always want to believe in aliens. At one point, I was one of them. But the truth is we have no proof that UFOs are out there, as most scientists can easily explain the majority of footages that it's taken. End quote. While one believer said the following, this is one of the problems we are facing when it comes to things like UFOs being seen close to the International Space Station. People are so quick to deny it. I think at this point we all need to understand that it's obvious that there's something going on. I'm not saying that every one of these things is an unidentified flying object, but to say that every single one of them can be explained away as space debris is just ignorant. It's clear that government officials are interested in the UFO phenomenon as declassified documents show us that they've been researching these things for several decades. And when they close down one of these projects that's been assigned to UFOs, they usually open up another one soon after. It's clear that there's something we're not being told when it comes to the subject of UFOs. The more we deny it, the more we dig ourselves a hole. And the harder it will be to open our minds to things we don't understand. For the past five years, government officials have been dropping hints that they know about these graphs. I hope that there will be an announcement soon and that we can all start to move forward. The Dogman is an elusive cryptid that's been seen all across America. Cryptids of creatures that are not backed up by science, noting that there's not enough evidence to suggest that they exist. However, a large number of people have come forward in recent years and have detailed their encounters and one of the most interesting ones is that of the mysterious Dogman. A large human dog-like creature described as looking like a werewolf and possessing superhuman one of the issues with the majority of these encounters is that they happen so fast and the eyewitnesses is usually left dazzled and confused. This comes down to the fact that they weren't expecting to see such a creature so don't have things like cameras ready when the encounter happens. When the eyewitnesses reach for their camera, the creature is usually vanished. However, I was sent a video of photos from a woman who claimed to have captured proof of the dogman. As mentioned, the dogman cryptid is probably one of the hardest to capture on camera and even harder to do so in the daytime. Yet this individual claims that what they saw looked eerily similar to the descriptions of the mysterious dogman. She said the following about the encounter. Yes, please use the images. I want everyone to look at it and tell me what they think because I have no idea what it is. It looks like it has a canine head to me and is as big as a bear, so I'm kind of thinking it's a dogman. Also, there have been several sightings back in the same era of an upright walking canine. Absolutely, go ahead and share my story. I've had other encounters in the area as well. And like I said, other people in the area have reported seeing a large upright creature. There's definitely something back there and it's staying around the same era because three other people have seen the same thing. End quote. Here's the video. Yeah, what is that? What was that? I seen its ear flick. Oh my god. It's just the legs and perked its ears up. Do it again, Kenna. Do it again. Interestingly, it does appear to resemble the dogman cryptid having a canine head and slender but muscular body. This could be some of the most impressive footage we have of this cryptid and could prove once and for all that eyewitnesses are actually seeing a creature that looks similar to a werewolf. Not many people have seen this footage, but those who have are convinced that it shows a dogman and say it's some of the best evidence we have so far. Even going on to note that you can see the creature moving its head and ears. One person said the following about the footage. I'm glad I saw this on the dogman group as I think it's some of the best evidence we have of the cryptid. The dogman has always interested me and been my favorite cryptid. Hearing people detail their stories always makes me more interested in the creature and wanting to research it more but some of these stories sound too far-fetched and unbelievable. But when I saw this footage, it matches up exactly with what people were seeing. It's incredible that we have such detailed footage of the dogman, and it's even more impressive that this was taken during the daytime. 
The majority of dogman encounters happen during the night, and even though some witnesses have tried to photograph what they saw, the photographs usually come out blank or are really hard to make out. It's very unusual to have photographs and videos of a cryptid during the daytime. Skeptics say that when people see these cryptids during the nighttime, they're actually just encountering everyday wildlife, but this footage pretty much matches up with the majority of eyewitness accounts. Those who have come forward with their encounters have often compared the creature to a more dog-like Sasquatch, whereas others believe it to be more of a werewolf beast than at the center of Skinwalker legends. Interestingly, for the last 60 years, there have been many reports about these creatures, and as with most of these tales, the majority of these stories follow a similar theme. Researchers have managed to pinpoint the first dogman sighting to 1887. This was said to have occurred in Wexford County. The story goes that two lumberjacks were having a conversation when one of them spotted something mysterious. He described it as having a man's body and a dog's head. When they noticed it, they quickly left the scene, not wanting to stay around and risk getting hurt by the large creature. It's interesting to note that the Navajo Native Americans have also been talking about these creatures for years. Though they're known as the dogmen, others have also said they go by the name of skimwalkers. They follow a similar description, looking like a human but having werewolf-like features. The Navajo described them as possessing superhuman strength, being able to move very fast and having the ability to easily take down a human. Although many people have come forward with their reports, one thing that the majority of these cases lack is evidence. It's frustrating for eyewitnesses as they encounter something incredible but then have no evidence to prove what they saw. Those who encounter something mysterious say it's very frustrating when this happens. As all you have to back up your claims is your words. As of today, there's been various people who have come forward with their encounters with the mysterious beast. There's those that believe that Dogman is real and tries to avoid being seen by humans. And then there's those that think the creature is just being misidentified with everyday wildlife. However, with this new footage, it may just win over a few people. Those that have seen it have said it's some of the best footage we have of the beast and could help us understand certain things about its anatomy. So what do you guys make of this interesting video and photographs? Do you think it shows the mysterious dogman? And if not, what do you think this creature is? Also, have any of you encountered a creature similar in appearance to the dogman? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comments section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Residents in Italy have just reported a worrying event. They have said that thousands of birds mysteriously fell from the sky during New Year's Eve and what's worrying is that this isn't the first time this has happened. At the moment, various different theories have been put forward for why these birds dropped to the ground, with local residents saying that birds in the air of Rome have been acting strange this year. One resident said the birds have been seen flying around in circles and not acting themselves. With others following on from this and saying that they're suddenly dropping from the sky and that they're not sure what's caused the birds to act like this. This recent discovery states that thousands of birds started to drop from the sky in central Rome and this was before, during and after fireworks were set off. The majority of the birds were discovered at the Tormini train station with motorists and residents being able to capture the aftermath of the event. Although some blame the fireworks on the birds dropping to the ground, others suggested that this isn't what caused them to fall. Going back in February, residents in Rome once again reported a worrying event. Hundreds of birds suddenly dropped to the ground. This news came shortly after police in North Wales investigated a similar occurrence. Fast forward two months and this was reported by residents in Rome. Strangely enough, residents reported that the birds acted very similar to those in Wales, saying that they were flying around in circles and then suddenly dropped to the ground. What's odd though is how many of these cases were happening so close to each other. As many have pointed out, it seems that these mass bird deaths are happening every other month and as of right now, no one seems to know why. Although researchers have given a variety of reasons why mass bird deaths can happen, it's unusual for them to be happening around the same time as each other. One resident in Rome said the following about the event. Me and my friend were close to the area when this happened. We could hear the birds going crazy and flying around in circles. I've lived in the area for years and I've never seen anything like this. No one seemed to be sure why they were acting this way. They were flying like this for over 45 minutes before they started to drop one by one. It was like something from a movie and was actually quite scary. It was like something was affecting them that we couldn't see. End quote. It's reported that hundreds of birds were found in Rome shortly after this event. One source reported that the reason these birds were dropping were due to strong winds. This explanation wasn't met with open arms. 
scientists and researchers have investigated this phenomenon over the years and different theories have been put forward to try and explain why these birds suddenly pass away. Various things can affect these birds. This ranges from electromagnetic currents to things like poisons. As some have said though, if these animals were poisoned, is it likely they would all drop at once and in the same air as each other? In these situations, all of the birds can be found very close to each other. Some have said it's as if these birds were zapped with something and whatever passed through them caused them to pass away on the spot. It does seem as though these cases have increased in the past year. Various reports have emerged from countries such as England, Wales, the Netherlands, and now Italy, and these are only the ones we know about. Many eyewitnesses have said they've seen something similar, but that the majority of the time it doesn't get reported by the news. As of right now, it's clear that something is affecting these birds, with some pointing out that these cases could be linked to each other in some way. Perhaps our planet is changing, or perhaps we are the cause behind these events. According to the United States Geological Survey World Life Health Center, in the United States over 175 mass bird deaths have occurred and this has happened in the last 10 years alone. What's confused some researchers though is that it's not always known why this happens, with various other countries reporting similar occurrences. Back in the middle of September, reports were made that another mass dive was happening in the southwestern area of the United States, and that it has some scientists confused and worried as to why this is happening. Various theories have been put forward to explain why this is happening. From the insects they eat to the air they're breathing, to wildlife and even other theories that suggest the magnetic field is playing up. Researchers said that the birds were not acting themselves. For example, not flying away when cars were driving towards them and just in general being down. Something that's not really seen in this area. It wasn't long before eyewitnesses came forward and said that the wildlife wasn't acting normal and some birds were just falling from the sky. When local researchers saw the numbers, they only then got an idea of how bad this was getting, saying that already hundreds of thousands of birds are showing this strange behavior and that the number could go into the millions. Residents in Wales have detailed seen birds acting strange. Noting that native species seem to be on the decrease, with one person saying the following, in Ainsley, this was reported a while back and this happened a few weeks after that initial event, but it didn't really get reported about. I discovered a few of these birds in my garden at the beginning of the year. What's strange they was during the middle of the night, I could hear some loud noises. They sounded like loud booms. And I did say to my partner that this will likely disturb the local wildlife. However, the next morning there were seven of these birds in my garden. I did talk to my neighbors about the booms, but they said that they didn't hear them, with my partner saying that they think it might have been the military. I'm not saying the two events are linked, but I just found it strange how these loud booms happened and then I found the birds in my garden the following morning. In recent years, governments have been more open about UFOs. This has caused some amateur researchers to suggest that disclosure could be coming. UFOs is an interesting topic and for decades, people across the world have been encountering strange crafts in the sky. This has caused some UFO researchers to look further into the subject, with some saying that ancient accounts detailed mysterious objects flying at fast speeds. One of the most famous accounts was detailed in an old Egyptian papyrus saying that the objects seen by the ancient Egyptians were brighter than the sun, even going on to detail them as a circle of fire or a fiery disk. At the moment, there's a lot of talk around UFOs and space forks and why the government decided to set up this new branch. Insiders are saying that before President Trump leaves office, he could reveal the truth about UFOs and what the government knows about them. Interestingly, going back a few months ago, the president was interviewed by his son. And during the interview, he talked about unidentified flying objects and aliens. He said the following, before you leave office, will you let us know if there's aliens? Because this is the only real thing I want to know. I want to know what's going on. Will you ever open up Roswell and let us know what's going on? President immediately responds with the following. So many people asked me this question. There are millions and millions of people that want to go there that want to see it. I won't talk to you about what I know about, but it's very interesting. Roswell is a very interesting place with a lot of people that would like to know what's going on. Donald Trump Jr. Then responds with the following. So you're saying you may declassify it? To which Donald Smilson says, I may have to think about this one. Many people in the UFO community were excited by this interview with some suggesting that perhaps big news could be coming in the next few weeks. One person said the following, I really like how he talked so openly about this. It's not something you see very often in politicians. He seemed very confident about what he was talking about. He didn't stutter and seemed almost happy talking about the subject. End quote. 
The interview and some of his comments have led some to believe that the president could release some classified information to the public. It's said that the Pentagon and other spy agencies are going to tell the public about everything they know about UFOs. This has happened before through declassified channels. With government officials and documents revealing that these unidentified flying objects have been observed over military installations. However, when the military have gone on to investigate them, they've said they suddenly disappeared or sped off at high speeds. Although this information has been available to the public for years now, there's others who have said the Pentagon are sitting on much more classified information and that it's unlikely that this information will ever get released. And this comes down to not wanting to worry people about the truths of our universe. However, as Summer pointed out, the president could reveal the truth about what he and the government knows. If he does, it would be the first time that any president openly revealed classified information to the public. This move was said to have been pushed by Mark Rubio, who detailed that mysterious crafts had been detected flying close to military bases. He went on to say that he hopes the crafts were being piloted by aliens and not the Russians. One of the reasons that people think these crafts aren't piloted by humans is because of what they're able to achieve. For example, when our best military jets go after them, they can easily outmaneuver them with some pilots even saying that it looked like these crafts were toying with them. If some other country has this technology, not only are they hundreds of years more advanced than the U.S., but they're able to achieve things that no other jets can. This is why some have put forward the idea that these crafts are being piloted by something unknown, as we have no tech on this planet that we know of that's able to achieve these things. This interview, along with all the other recent UFO news, has only caused excitement amongst us. After all, going back a few months ago, the Pentagon formally released three unclassified videos taken by Navy pilots. The mysterious video showing UFOs have been circulating for years. It's caused various theories to be put forward to try and explain them. However, for skeptics, they wouldn't believe the footage until the government came forward and announced they were real. And this is exactly what happened a few months back. And they've been given the name of unidentified aerophenomena. Although this is massive news, it's not anything new. Pilots have been coming forward for years and detailing their interactions with unidentified flying objects. One person said the following, Comments are interesting and even after they captured these unidentified aerial objects on camera it still feels like they're downplaying it. Although this is great news and I'm happy they're admitting the videos are genuine and show something mysterious. What about all the people that have been told to be quiet when they've talked about their encounters? And I'm not just talking about everyday people. People in high positions who have tried to talk about these objects have just been branded as crazy. Where's the justice in that? All they were trying to do was reveal what they saw and were told to be quiet, with some people even losing their jobs or being demoted over it. End quote. Interestingly, celebrities like Tom DeLonge have been vocal about UFOs. Going back a few months ago, Tom DeLonge said the following, Everyone will know the reality soon, and unfortunately it's not something to be laughed at. It's pretty unnerving. With some bad news, some good news, and with that in mind, all we can do is deal with it honestly and openly. End quote. Now we may know what he was referring to. It turns out that in a statement by Steve Justice, who is the chief operating officer of To The Stars Academy of Arts and Sciences, they say how the organization got their hands on exotic properties. He said the following about the object. The structures and composition of these materials are not from any known existing military or commercial application. They've been collected from sources with varying levels of chain of custody documentation, so we are focusing on verifiable facts and working to develop independent scientific proof of the material's properties and attributes. Throughout human history, there have been a handful of individuals seemingly possessing the ability to not only predict the future, but to potentially have caused a change to our world in ways unimaginable at the time. Some of these individuals have claimed they've traveled to the future, revealing details about how our planet looks, what happens to the human race, and how the future may not look all that bright for us humans. Various people have made predictions in the past, some of which they were mocked for as they sounded too fantastical or just outright bizarre. But those who have researched these cases have said that some of these predictions actually came true. Scientists have said that there's no proof of time travelers and anyone who tells a story of time travel is just making it up. Regardless, there's those that claim to have traveled to the future, and some stories are eerily similar to events that are playing out at the moment. One person shared their time travel stories saying they traveled to the year 2030. 
They said the following, I can't give specific details about my work, but I was able to travel forward in time due to my job. My whole life I've been dedicated to my job. I have no partner or children and it allows me to focus all my attention on my career. It also means that when risky situations come up at work, I'll happily put myself forward. After all, I have nothing to lose. The classified program I was a part of gave me and several other employees the opportunity to travel forward in time. I don't expect to win everyone over with my experience. I just want to tell people what I saw. The year 2030 will not be a utopia. It will be an interesting year that will cause even more divide than what's happening right now. The vast majority of people will not own anything by the time 2030 comes around. The majority of the population will begin to rely on their state, and this is exactly what they wanted as it means all those individuals will have lost any power they once had. One of the first questions you might have then is how would this ever happen? There's no way people would just sit back and accept something like this. The reason behind why this plays out so perfectly for them is because they will sell it to you as though it benefits you. When in reality the only people benefiting from this will be the people at the top. By the time this year comes around the majority of people will own nothing. How this works is that people will rent things from the state. You will have the opportunity to rid yourself of debt and things you can't pay off. What this means is that you will be a free human. Or at least, this is how they want to sell it to you. What it actually means is that you'll be under control of the state. Whether you will admit it or not, they will own you in everything that you do in your life. They will sell this that there's a lot of pros for you and that this is an opportunity you should take. But be warned, once you sign over this deal, there's no turning back. You are essentially signing your life over to them and will become 100% dependent upon the government. I'm still torn about the experience. The human brain is a very complex thing and it's no secret that we have devices and ways that mess with it. I know this because I've taken things and have experimented on people. These classified projects are still happening. We have the technology to do this without having someone directly in front of us. We can use this tech from afar and watch as the start effects play out. I understand if people don't believe me, but one thing you can guarantee is that this plan is playing out right before your eyes. One of the reasons why people don't see this is because they're not selling it as I've stated it. They all sell it to you as if it benefits you. End quote. What's interesting about these statements is that this person isn't the first one to come forward with this idea. And many who've read these kinds of statements have said they don't sound too far-fetched. Others in the post have warned us about what the future looks like and that governments will come together and essentially rule over our lives. There's those that bind to these theories and others that say they're just made up and that the government has never done anything bad to us and that they should be trusted. There's others though that have said the idea of time travel is possible. Though evidence of this being able to occur in our universe has yet to be proven according to the efforts made in understanding gravitational waves and warping of space and time. Einstein came across a strange revelation when it came to understanding the nature of the distance in the universe. It was originally believed in classical physics that the shortest possible distance between two points was that of a straight line drawn between both points. However, Einstein challenged this idea by noting that the very fabric of space and time could warp and bend, meaning that the shortest distance between two points is rather the two points being directly folded on top of each other. His analogy was often compared to a worm and an apple. Rather than going around the surface of the apple to get to the other side, the worm could burrow through the apple, creating a hole in the surface and appearing directly on the other side. It's of no surprise then that this theoretical tear through the fabric of space and time is referred to that of a wormhole. This means that if properly achieved, movement across the universe could be shortened to something known as an instantaneous transportation. This means that rather than traveling any distance whatsoever, theoretically one would have traveled no distance at all, seemingly appearing at their desired location any distance across the universe. Once the mechanisms for how such a movement is achieved, it would be possible that to travel between planets, we would not even have to exit the atmosphere to appear on the other side of the universe. Space is one place that humans will never fully explore. Scientists have said it's likely that we'll travel within our solar system, but anything beyond that poses much more complex problems. Some scientists and researchers have said the human brain can't comprehend the size of the universe and everything that's contained within it, and that there's just some things that we as humans will never fully understand. It's only been in the last few decades that we've made big strides in terms of space exploration. We are currently living in an exciting time. Space agencies are creating more sophisticated rockets. They are gearing up to send humans to the red planet. 
they are discovering more galaxies and planets than ever. And we've even detected signs of water on some of these solar bodies. However, due to the vast amounts of photographs that have been taken from spacecrafts, some amateur researchers have spent countless hours looking through these in the hopes of finding something strange. One of these individuals is that of Scott Waring, a vocal UFO researcher who constantly looks through old NASA images in the hopes of finding something that looks out of place. And that's exactly what happened when he discovered an anomaly in an old Apollo 15 image. He said the following about the discovery. When looking over Apollo 15 images, I came across a photo that has a mothership in it. It's not a cloud. Clouds do not exist on the moon. So I enlarged the photo and saw it wasn't just a ship. It looked very like the Starship Voyager from Star Trek. End quote. He goes on to claim that the ship in question is over 10.6 kilometers or 6.5 miles in diameter. Other amateur researchers have come forward in recent years and claimed to have found similar looking objects in old photographs. And they say that this proves that there's more going on than what we're being told about. And in some cases, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration is even editing out these images in the hopes that we won't see them. Amateur researchers say they do this because they think if the majority of the population find out about these things, they would just panic. NASA have come forward in recent years and have said that these claims cannot be backed up and that they've never airbrushed or tried to hide anomalies in their photographs. Amateur researchers have said though that if you spend long enough you can find them yourself. However, as some have said, if this was a genuine craft NASA would have just deleted the images. To this day they can still be found on various websites. NASA have said though that it's their job to find these kinds of discoveries and help push us forward and in all the years of searching they've never found anything of interest or they can't be explained and go on to say that every single UFO photo can be explained as space dust. There's some who have said that we'll never understand the mysteries of the universe. Why are we here? It's a question many have asked but no one knows the answer to. Life itself is a mystery. Two leading scientists have come forward and said that the human brain is a biological computer and that the consciousness of a human being is a program that runs by the brain's computer. It's believed that within the human brain there resides around 86 billion brain cells. The soul is something that's made many people put forward different theories. There's always been debate about the soul of a human and whether or not it goes on after life. There are those that believe your soul is what's actually keeping you alive, while others suggest that the soul is nothing. However, recently researchers think they've found a new truth about the soul. They've put forward the theory that the soul doesn't die, it goes back into the universe. Dr. Stuart Hamroff, who is a physicist, and Sarah Roger Penrose, a mathematical physicist at Oxford University, have been working on the quantum theory of consciousness. Both of them suggest that the soul of a person is in the microtubules of the brain cells. Their theory states that human beings' soul is contained within the cells of the brain in structures that are inside them called microtubules. It sounds confusing, but the doctors think the human brain is just a biological computer. The consciousness we experience is run by the computer inside the brain. This means it will continue to exist after the human has gone. Both of them suggest that what humans think of consciousness is the result of the effect of the quantum gravity that is situated in the microtubules. The doctors said that when the heart of a person stops beating, the blood then starts flowing around the body. In turn, the microtubules inside the brain begin to lose the quantum state. However, the quantum information that's in these microtubules does not get destroyed. Instead, it gets distributed into the universe. This could mean that after death our memories will enter the universe and carry on. Scientists have stated that humans may never be able to understand the universe. No one truly knows what happens when we pass. Many theories are being put forward, but we will only know the truth when we experience it. Humans have a natural fear of this, and this may be due to the fact that we associate it with pain. But if this theory is correct, it could mean that life on Earth is just the beginning. So how do the 100 trillion neural connections in our brains work together to create the feeling of being alive? Many great thinkers consider consciousness to be the biggest mystery not just of the human body, but the biggest ever. Any single brain, including yours, is made up of atoms that were forged in the hearts of countless far-flung stars billions of years ago. These particles drifted for eons and light years until gravity and chance brought them together. These atoms now form your brain that can not only ponder the very stars that gave it birth, but can also think about its own ability to think and wonder about its own ability to wonder. With the arrival of humans, it's been said the universe has suddenly become conscious of itself. This truly is the greatest mystery of all. 
Time travel is an interesting topic. Although the idea of time travel is hypothetical, there's many stories that have been shared in recent years claiming that we've achieved time travel. One of these stories comes from an interesting device that's said to be held deep within the Vatican. The Vatican archives have long said to hide some of the world's biggest secrets, with some saying they hide the truth behind extraterrestrial encounters and sightings, while others say they hide the truth about Jesus. One story that caught the attention of many was when a Catholic priest admitted that the Vatican had in its possession a time travel device. And this device allowed anyone to go back to a specific time in the past and view those events. In the 1960s, a Roman Catholic monk named Favinetti met another monk named Favenbrunn, and this was on a ferry ride to Venice. During the ferry ride, they discussed their own biblical interpretations. Favinetti said something that surprised Favbrunn. He said that he didn't see the need for theories and interpretations when they had the ability to see the truth for themselves. Favinetti claimed there was a machine that could show them what really happened during the Bible days. Farvanetti told Favbrunn about a time-viewing machine called a chronovisor, which looked similar to a television that allowed people to see and hear things that happened in the past. He said it finds noises in sights that were still floating around in space. Father Anetti even claimed that while using this mysterious device, he'd watched the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Years before this, while working with Father Gamilai on filtering the harmonics for Gregorian chants, they somehow heard the voice of Father Gamilai's father speaking through the wire recorder, even though he'd already passed away. After this, Father Anetti couldn't stop wondering what happened to noises and sights from the past. He put together a secret team of scientists to help him figure this out. The only two scientists ever named were Juan Hervin Braun and Enrico Fermi. This secret team built the Cronavisa in the 1950s. It allowed them to see and hear any time and place that ever existed. They not only claimed to have watched Jesus Christ, but also Napoleon, along with the plays by famous Roman authors. The team agreed to dismount the device after realizing how powerful it could be in the wrong hands. No moment could ever be completely private if they could see and hear any moment in time. They also believed that if the wrong person got hold of the machine, this person could become the worst dictator to ever exist. Father Anetti was often asked for proof of the machine. He transcribed the play thesis and offered it as proof only to certain people. He also had a picture of Christ that he had taken a photograph of through the chronovisa. The picture shows Christ looking up while he was on the cross. However, both pieces of evidence were eventually criticized. Experts believe that the transcription of the play was too short to be a full play, as most would have been at least ten times longer than what Faverinetti had transcribed. He also included many Latin words that weren't used until around 200 years after the play. The play also seemed to be written by someone who didn't know Latin very well, even though it was the playwriter's native language, leading many to believe that Favernetti made it all up. People also noticed that the picture of Christ was the same as the picture on postcards sold at the Sanctuary of Merciful Love in Italy. The final piece of evidence that disproved Favernetti's story was a letter from an anonymous relative. This relative claimed that while on his deathbed, Favernetti admitted that he'd faked his previous pieces of evidence. He said he made up his own transcription of the play and that the photograph of Christ really was a copy from the postcard sold. However, he still insisted that the chronovisa was real and that he really saw the events he previously claimed to have seen. Father Anetti never told anyone how the coronavisor was made or how it worked, so there was never any tangible evidence. Although most people always believed he was lying, Father Brun believed him. He believed that since the photos of Christ sold in the church in Sanctuary of Merciful Love were based on the descriptions of a vision and none had of Christ, both photos could have been acro photos. He also said that if Father Anetti really made this confession before dying, he may have done so because he is threatened by the Vatican. Even though Father Anetti claims the team dismantled the chronovisa, some people believe it's still hidden away somewhere deep in the Vatican and will likely always remain a secret. One person said the following about the story. The reason we will never find out the truth about this is because it would go against the very thing they're pushing. Just imagine if you could travel back 100,000 years in the past. You've already dismantled their idea that the world is only a few thousand years old. I think a lot of people are starting to wake up to the idea that religion is built on fear and misinformation. For example, going back when the sky would rumble or the ground would shake, that was explained to the gods being angry. But now we know that these things happen because of thunder and lightning and tectonic plate movements. As humans have aged we've increased our knowledge, allowing us to explain certain things with ease. 
For me, how people still look at a book that was written thousands of years ago as fact is beyond belief. How billions of people to this day still believe religion is tough to understand. Studies have shown that more people are moving forward with their belief system instead of relying on superstition. But it's still an interesting argument that carries on in the modern day. End quote. Others have followed on from these ideas and have said the Bible was most likely a case of misinformation and that over the years more information got added to make the story more interesting. There are some who believe the real artifacts from the past are hidden deep within the Vatican archives and that only a few selected individuals will ever be allowed to see these. Although small sections are being opened, the large majority of the archives remain a secret. When you think of space, you might think of things like planets and galaxies, but many of us have thought about whether or not life exists out there in the vastness of space. It's a question that's been asked time and time again. Are we alone in the universe? NASA scientists have said there's over 100 billion planets in the Milky Way galaxy alone, and there's hundreds of millions of galaxies all teeming with millions or billions of planets. This makes the likelihood of there being life in our universe very high. This is why NASA and other space agencies are now making it their goal to visit various systems in the hopes of finding life. It's likely it will happen. The question is when and how long will it take? For all we know, there could be life only a couple of million miles away. And when you're talking about space, billions of miles is a very small distance. However, there's some people who have captured interesting photos throughout the years and say that these help prove that we're not alone in the universe. One of my subscribers sent me this photograph and said that it was taken alongside the International Space Station. They managed to quickly snap a photograph of the strange object but couldn't explain what it was. At first, they speculated that it may have been a satellite, but then thought it was likely too close to be one. I shared this image to a few groups to get their opinions. Some said the object in question doesn't look like a piece of space junk, going on to say it has sharp edges and even looks to be in the shape of a triangle. Others carried on from this and said that is either producing light or lights bouncing off the object, which allows us to see it. Also stating that it's too detailed to be a random piece of space debris. What's interesting about these types of photographs is that there's many like this. UFO researchers have been vocal about the fact that the International Space Station is actually a hotspot for UFO activity and that every year many strange objects can be seen around the space station cameras. Sometimes these objects around the cameras are not seen for long, as they can be seen making a quick exit while others can be seen zipping past at extremely high speeds. Skeptics who have seen these types of images suggest that what people are seeing is just space debris and sometimes they can take on different forms that make them look like UFOs. Further saying that there's thousands of pieces of space debris above our planet and it's likely that that's what people are seeing. Those who have watched the live cams and have studied these images though have said this isn't what people are seeing pointing out that when these objects come within the live cams view NASA shuts off the feed they ask that if these were just space debris then why do the cameras always shut off when they come into view this has happened on a number of occasions with UFO researchers saying that it proves that something is going on that NASA doesn't want us to know about in the past news. Stations have tried to reach out to NASA to get an answer for what they think these objects are, but 99% of the time they fail to give an answer. Skeptics have also said that people don't understand that a lot of events happen above our planet, with one of the most common ones being that of meteorites entering our atmosphere. They've said that people who aren't used to the site will confuse this with things like UFOs, when in reality what they're witnessing is something that happens all the time. Well, one believer said the following, this is one of the problems we're facing when it comes to things like UFOs being seen close to the International Space Station. People are so quick to deny it. I think at this point we all need to understand that it's obvious that something is going on. I'm not saying that every one of these things is an unidentified flying object, but to say that every single one can be explained away is supposed to be just ignorant. It's clear that government officials are interested in the UFO phenomena as declassified documents show us that they've been researching these things for several decades and when they close down one of these projects that's been assigned to UFOs, they usually open up another one soon after. It's clear that there's something we're not being told about when it comes to the subject of UFOs. The more we deny it, the more we dig ourselves a hole and the harder it will be to open our minds to things we don't understand. The past five years, government officials have been dropping hints that they know about these crafts. I hope that there will be an announcement soon and that we can all start moving forward. End quote. Right now, there's still people that believe these objects are not natural and that some photographs show what looks like crafts under intelligent control. 
In some cases, people have reported that these objects will suddenly cover a vast distance in a matter of seconds, or that they've witnessed these crafts making a 360-degree turn and then shoot away. They say that we don't have the technology to be able to do this, and it's one of the reasons why they think something is going on. Although it's easy to dismiss some of these claims, it's important to have an open mind about these objects and the subject in general. When it comes to the universe, we are monumentally small and inconsequential. There's quadrillions of planets scattered all throughout the universe, and all you need is one of them to be 100,000 years ahead of us, and potentially you'd have a civilization 100,000 years more advanced. Think how much we've achieved in the last 100 years alone. So is it really out there to think that an advanced civilization could exist somewhere in the universe? All across North America are reports of a creature that's been given the name of the dogman. Those who have reported the creature have described it as looking like a strange werewolf-like creature and seems to possess supernatural strength and abilities. Those who have come forward with their encounters have often compared the creature to a more dog-like Sasquatch, whereas others believe it to be more of a werewolf beast and at the center of skinwalker legends. Interestingly, for the last 60 years, there have been many reports about these creatures, and as with most of these tales, the majority of these stories follow a similar theme. Researchers have managed to pinpoint the first dog man sighting to 1887. This was said to have occurred in Wexford County. The story goes that two lumberjacks were having a conversation when one of them spotted something mysterious. He described it as having a man's body and a dog's head. When they noticed it, they quickly left the scene, not wanting to stay and risk getting hurt by the large creature. Fast forward to 1961 and the security guard witnessed something similar in Big Rapids, Michigan. Most of the encounters with these creatures are just stories and there's no way to back up what the individual saw. However, the security guard remembered that he had a camera on him and was in fact able to snap a photograph of the large beast. Those who have analyzed it say it matches other eyewitness descriptions of the dogman. One of the issues with these types of stories is the lack of evidence to back them up. But now another photograph is making its way online allegedly showing the dogman cryptid. It's hard to track down its origin, but the image was first seen on various groups on Facebook. The story goes that one night someone was looking through their trail camera that was pointed towards their garden. After a while, they could see something moving in the bushes towards the left side of the screen. Brushing it off as everyday wildlife, they didn't bother to look closer, as seeing nature in their back garden wasn't uncommon. However, after a few minutes, the individual noticed that whatever this thing was, was taking up a lot of room. The animal soon left the scene, leaving the person confused with what they'd just seen. They then decided to download the video and brighten it on their computer. It was only after doing this that they discovered a large dog-like creature had been there the whole time, looking towards the house where the person had been watching the camera. Those who have seen the image have said it's one of the best pieces of evidence of the dogman creature. As of today, there's been various people who have come forward with their encounters with this mysterious beast. One person said the following about their encounter. I'm going to tell you a story of mine that I rarely tell. My own family don't even know about this. And while that may sound strange to you, trust me. It makes sense to tell internet strangers than people I'm forced to be around. This story has been told on YouTube before, but I want to clear up some confusion around it. This happened when I was much younger. I'd have to ask my parents when the camping trip happened to tell you how many years ago it was, but I can assure you it was at least a decade. Now I'm going to use some questionable words to describe the location. Words like wooded and wilderness reserve because I don't know the best words for this thing. Around a decade ago, a friend from church asked me to join his family on a camping trip to a wilderness reserve called Oasis State Park. Of course, since this was my best friend and his family had always been nice, I said yes. Up until that point, I'd only camped rarely, so the prospect of camping with a friend and his family seemed absolutely amazing. So we began preparing for a weekend when I wasn't busy. I got my own tent, my own sleeping bag, and my own supplies. Once all that was gathered, the father of the friend came and picked me up and my parents waved me off. There's quite a few things I remember from that trip. The amazingly hostile yet beautiful New Mexico countryside. The high ground and the campsite. The New Mexican wilderness isn't something a lot of people fantasize about camping in. At least not as far as I know. But Oasis State Park is different. The camping plots are all nice even if the best ones are taken. There's a pretty lake, lots of wildlife, and I have to admit, more trees than I've ever seen in my town. I know nobody thinks of multitudes of trees when they think of New Mexico, and for good reason. 
They aren't the most common occurrence in the plains unless planted by people. Regardless, Oasis has enough for me to use the term woods. We found ourselves a plot and began setting up our tents. By the afternoon, the tents were set and me and my friend ditched his boring younger sister in favor of exploring the park. The memories are fantastic. We found a snake by the lake and watched it drink from the water before slithering off quickly. We explored a place I remember was very sandy. We watched a roadrunner doing its thing. We played all day after lunch and saw so many amazing things by the end of the day. I never would have thought anything could go wrong. We finished the day like you always do by collecting sticks and starting a fire to eat s'mores and tell ghost stories. None of the stories were scary, probably because me and my friend were kids and his sister was even younger. Shortly after the stories were said and s'mores were eaten, we retired. Me to my tent and my friend, his father and his sister to their tent. For this setup will explain the positioning. This is all going to be important. My tent was at one edge of the plot and my friend's tent was at the exact opposite. This was for privacy reasons. Now at my end of the plot was a mini trail that led through thick brush to the lake. Also around three feet from my tent was a little tree. I don't know what kind of tree it was but it was still young and small. The trail to the lake was to the left of my tent. The lake was behind it and a thin tree line sat across a trail in front of my tent. That trail in front of my tent led to the bathrooms. So I went to bed without a single bit of fear. And before I did, I went ahead and urinated on the tree outside of my tent because of laziness. I didn't want to do a two-minute walk to the bathrooms when Nietzsche's toilet was outside my tent. So I finished closing my tent for the night and climbed into my sleeping bag. I don't know how long I slept, but I woke up to use the bathroom. Before I did this, though, I decided to grab my little lantern. I flipped on my LED lantern and unzipped the inner flap of my tent. As if that little, non on net could protect me from what I was about to see. Now I should mention that outside of cities in New Mexico, it's quite common to hear coyotes howl. It's a nutty occurrence in camping. Even up in little villages like Logan, you can hear howls from your bedroom. It isn't so unnerving when you're in a house. But when you've got some flimsy null and walls to protect you and that's it, it isn't the most comforting sound. As I unzipped my tent flap, I could hear a few howls. But they were distant to not worrying. What stunned me into stillness was a loud howl from the direction of the lake. About a yard from my tent. This howl was different though. It had the feel of a coat Y howl, but it was deeper and lasted longer. I simply sat there petrified at what I'd heard. I wouldn't be able to guess at how long I sat there breathing hard with my fingers still grasping the zipper, but however long it may have been it was just long enough for the thing that made the howl to come up to my tent. And after the claws on the rocks that made our camping plots. Then I saw the largest shadow made by a living creature I'd ever seen. It lumbered heavily in the direction of the sparse tree line, where I assumed the other howling had come from. Before it got past the tree I urinated on, it stomped. I realized only then that I was both lit like a candle and had not been trying to silence my heavy breathing. By then it was too late as the hulking thing lumbered over close to the tree and into the light of my lantern. As dim as the LED light was at that distance, it was just barely enough to make out details. I'd like to note a few very important details that stuck out to me as odd. It had roughly the fur coloring of a Cody, but that classic dogman head shape with tiny pointed ears too small to make sense. It also made strange noises as it lowered on all fours in front of my tent. Popping sounds like joints rubbing together as I can only imagine its knees busted out of their standing joints and fell into different joints to support it on all fours. It briefly ignored me. The breaths were similar to a dog's but longer and far deeper, almost like a horse's. Then that thing turned to me and stared me straight into my eyes. Its eyes didn't glow. They didn't peer into my soul, but they were unbelievably unnatural. Above all things I saw in those eyes, I saw a predator. Have you ever been in a position where you made eye contact with a beast you know is stronger than you? Something you know could just slaughter you and you know it knows you know. Just looking for so long that I thought for sure I'd just be a bloody stain by the time anyone reached my tent. Screaming would do nothing. Despite every feeling in my gut, despite the dread of knowing it was a predator and I was prey, I didn't die. Instead it turned slowly, ever so slowly and just sprinted off into the woods. It just went into the night faster than it came. I have one personal friend who knows about what happened and jokes that it was my wee that caused it to stall and then run away or maybe it just wasn't hungry. Almost improbable it just had enough morals not to kill a kid. I'll never really know. Needless to say I didn't go to the bathroom. I just put my lantern away, closed up my tent flap and held it in all night. I don't remember sleeping that night. I might have, I might not. But if I did, it was dreamless. I do remember that I tried to hide the expression the next day. Asking if my friend and his family heard any howling. 
While they did hear howling they told me just to ignore it, thinking it was a coyote. I was encouraged to ignore it as if I was a city kid who'd never heard a coyote howling before. The next day I stayed as close to my friends as possible while exploring and had nearly forgotten about the encounter by lunch. Somehow the safety I had been feeling during the day put the beast out of my mind until we found tracks in a sandy place. I think those tracks confirmed to me that it wasn't just a dream and because of that I showed enough fear that night to convince my friend's family to let me sleep in their tent. Even in the comfort of a warmer tent and in the presence of a few adults, I couldn't sleep that night. I'd nearly drift into a sleep and then I'd hear a Cody howl. The next day I pretended to be sick and got my mother to drive up and take me home a day or two early. It was the worst camping trip of my life. It ruined not only my whole summer but it also ruined camping. I haven't been camping without a tent buddy since and I don't plan to. Even then, I'm never comfortable. I'm always listening for strange noises and acting paranoid. This really messed me up. Being forced to see that a human which is at the top of the food chain is utterly powerless in front of such a beast. I don't think I can press hard enough to make everyone realize how powerless I felt. Even today when I think about this, I remember two things. Those eyes and that feeling. Just writing this sent multiple shivers up my spine. Dr. Sergio Canavero is an Italian neuroscientist and is someone who's been making the news in the last few years. This is because he and his team claim that they're close to being able to perform the first head transplant. Dr. Sergio has been claiming that he and his team are able to perform the head transplant and that they aim to do this on someone very soon. Some people have come forward to say they would like to participate in this. And this mainly comes from those whose bodies are no longer functioning as they should. So a surgery such as this one could potentially change their lives. One of the problems with these claims is that people aren't sure what is true and what isn't. The neuroscientist keeps popping up in the media every couple of years or so and back in 2017 he claimed he had successfully performed a hair transplant. This claim made news all around the world with pretty much everyone saying what an incredible achievement this was. However, once the dust had settled, people soon started to ask questions. It turns out the head transplant was done on a monkey, and while it's reported that the monkey did survive the procedure, it's also claimed that the animals only kept alive for 20 hours due to ethical reasons. The next issue came when the doctor said he didn't reconnect the spinal cord to the monkey. Researchers said this would have been a big problem for the monkey as it would have been paralyzed for life. A lack of consciousness and not being able to survive past a day didn't give doctors in the field confidence and it's caused the majority of people to say that these claims are likely a stunt. Regardless, the Italian neurosurgeon has said the procedure can be done and that it will likely happen within the next few years. Doctors have gone on to say that certain procedures can work while others just don't. For example, there was a story that was covered a while back when a young adult had a damaged spine. The doctors operating on them managed to reattach the spinal cord. But they said the reason this worked is because they were working with something that was damaged. When something is completely severed, it's a different story. It's one of the reasons why they believe the doctor's words are not rooted in fact. This idea has been thrown around before. And it's not as simple as just taking a head and placing it on a body. You can't just connect things in this way. Scientists have said though that although we might be years away from doing a head transplant, every year we are making new incredible discoveries in the field of science and it's these ones that we should be celebrating. Since the dawn of the age of information, it feels as if humanity has been at a constant rate of breakthroughs and discoveries since the beginning of the 21st century. This means that every year we see new and exciting technologies and scientific breakthroughs that make the front pages. One recent breakthrough involves 3D printing, although the technique has been in practice for quite some time. 3D transplanted organs have been making strides in the field of organ development and seen in potential use for people of all kinds all across the world for different reasons. We've already seen humans' heart-growing labs and being built via the use of stem cells and structures built from 3D printed skeletons, but it appears that with recent breakthroughs the process will become more accessible to the public in the coming years developing their work on the years of previous research into the field. A team of research scientists from the Imperial College of London and the King's College London have worked around the clock to create new techniques for printing 3D structures to be used for human organs and tissues. They rely on the use of cryogenics to create structures that can mimic the mechanical properties of brain and lung tissues to be used to help repair damaged tissues without risk of rejection from donors and transplants. 
This could potentially help to solve modern-day medicine issues such as that of transplant rejection, organ and tissue shortages, and perhaps in the near future total blindness in a patient since birth. The potential to help repair and replace any damaged organs in the body, excluding that of the human brain without the expense of an organ donor, could mean the overall life expectancy of a human being going well past triple digits, and perhaps even longer than 150 years. This could mean that a person could theoretically live for hundreds of years longer than previously expected and still be in good enough shape with the addition of transplants and tissue repairs. The universal donor blood also made the news. As many people are aware, the nature of different blood types makes it a difficult problem faced by modern medicine facilities that need to ensure that the right blood type are given to certain people as to prevent an immune response and the rejection of the new blood. This leaves only one blood type known as O to be used as the basis of a universal donor blood type that can be accepted by all blood types in the world. Unsurprisingly, O blood is incredibly rare and leaves many of that specific blood type out of donors when they are faced with issues of blood loss and blood transfusions. Unfortunately, it appears that a recent scientific breakthrough might help research scientists to convert all blood types into the universal donor variation that can be used to help combat blood transfusions issues seen today. This revolutionary breakthrough comes from researchers from the University of British Columbia that believe they've discovered a new enzyme from the human gut that can help convert type and type B blood types into a type O blood. This is done by using the M-zones to help break down the sugars attached to red blood cells that help the body to distinguish between different blood types to then be allowed to be accepted as a universal donor blood type. There were previously discovered practices that could perform this task, though they were believed to be terribly inefficient. This new practice is believed to be more than 30 times more efficient than previously discovered methods. And we'll see practical clinical trials in the coming years. This could mean that in the next five years, this technology could be used to help make all blood types into universal donors and help to solve the chronic blood supply shortage seen all across the world. A. Vilob, who is the chairman of Harvard's Department of Astronomy, claims that he thinks he's found proof of extraterrestrials and this came in the form of some garbage. He has an upcoming book titled Extraterrestrial, The First Sign of Intelligent Life Beyond Earth and in it he details that mysterious objects that made its way into our solar system may be proof of extraterrestrials. It's not very often that you get hyper-officials talk about this subject. However, this year alone, many government officials have been quite vocal about the UFO phenomena and have stated in recent years unidentified crafts have been detected in our skies and that these objects need to be taken more seriously. The objects the professor is talking about immediately displayed some strange signs. In this course, scientists and researchers from around the world to speculate what it was. The object was given the name of a Mwamua, but the professor has given some examples of why this object might not be a space rock and that it could actually be a piece of alien technology. On the 19th of October 2017, we were visited by something that scientists couldn't initially explain. It was called a Mwamua and astronomers first noticed this object traveling through our solar system. The object in question had come from another solar system and people quickly started to speculate what the object was. It could be seen traveling around the sun and then shooting away again. However, after this it was not to return. Astronomers were able to record data on the object for a short period of time, with them saying that the mysterious object had been in our solar system for over a century. The reason Oumuamua wasn't spotted until 2017 is because it wasn't close enough to reflect enough light for astronomers to pick up. Even when it did get close it was moving very fast and meant astronomers had very little time to observe it. Once the strange object flew around the sun it was getting further away, meaning it was getting fainter and fainter. The astronomers' very last observations from Hubble were on the 2nd of January 2018. On the 3rd of May it was then seen outside of Jupiter's orbit. The first theory that was put forward was that it was an asteroid. The scientists looked at the size of the object which was 2,600 feet or 800 meters long and around 260 feet or 80 meters wide. However, in June it was reported that astronomers stated that the object was not moving as it should. They picked up on the fact that Amua showed a really strong non-gravitational acceleration. This tells the researchers that its motion indicated that gravity was not the only thing dictating its path. Many people have put forward their theories, one of which is that this object is extraterrestrial in nature. 
The fact that it moves like nothing researchers have seen before could indicate it's under intelligent control. Most scientists suggested that a Muamua was likely something natural and that its acceleration was due to a natural phenomenon. The next idea was that this mysterious object was releasing a large amount of hydrogen, and this was causing it to speed up. Interestingly, though, not everyone has agreed with this theory. Going back on the 17th of August, a new paper was published in the Astrophysical Journal Letters. Loeb and Theum Hong, who are astrophysicists at the Korea Astronomy and Space Science Institute, have said they don't think the hydrogen idea holds up and that it wouldn't work in space. This has caused some excitement as some have gone back to the idea that this is alien tech. After all, there's many strange properties about this object that researchers can't explain. For example, the way it mimicked a comet but yet it didn't have a tail. Also, NASA themselves reported that the interstellar visitor is 10 times long as it is wide and that this aspect ratio is far greater than any asteroid or comet observed in our solar system to date. This giant cigar-shaped object is still up for debate, and it seems with this recent paper being released we aren't any closer to understanding what this mysterious object is. Dr. Bailey from Harvard University said the following about the object. I wouldn't say I believe it's sent by aliens as I am a scientist and not a believer. I rely on evidence to put forward possible physical explanation for observed phenomena. It seems, however, until we have more evidence, we can't come to a conclusion on what this object is. Ultimately, it will be very difficult to find out more about Oumuamua as it's no longer in the solar system. According to some, Oumuamua is expected to reach the Kuiper Belt in around 2024. Loeb started to open his mind to the possibility that this mysterious space object could be something else. And that is mentioned it may be a piece of alien tech that's made its way into our solar system. Those who heard about the professor putting forward this idea gave him prompts, saying that it's not very often that someone in this field has an open mind and puts forward these kinds of theories. So when it happens, they should be told that it's appreciated. This is one of the problems that people have when scientists put forward their theories. They say that it's a little frustrating when scientists try to explain things straight away and it feels as though they don't like to leave things as unknown. When it comes to the universe, it's fair to say that humans don't know very much. And why would we? Modern humans haven't been studying the cosmos for very long. So how can you expect us to know all of the answers? Every so often, a discovery like this is going to come along. And there's nothing wrong with having an open mind about what it is and where it came from. As of right now, scientists and researchers still disagree on what this strange object is and have said that we'll have to wait for it to come back around again for us to study it in more detail. Some scientists have said the asteroid or comet theory doesn't hold up due to its shape and because of the way it was acting, with other scientists saying it's an exciting object that needs to be studied in more detail. As technology has continued to grow, we find that there are very few last unexplored frontiers. Satellite imaging has helped to locate all of the lands on our planet and has helped researchers peer deep into the oceans. Due to recent advancements, we've even been able to see what's hiding underneath dense jungles. This has in turn allowed us to uncover a wide number of impo artifacts in hidden cities. However, it appears that despite all of our technology, the deep forests of the world prevent many from exploring these areas further and has meant that amateur researchers have made their way into these areas with the hopes of making their own discoveries. There's no shortage of mysterious photos. Due to social media, many of these photographs have been shared online, causing some to take it upon themselves to investigate them further. However, many of these remain unexplained as more information can't be gathered. One interesting photograph that's made the rounds on social media is this one, and it shows a strange man in the background of a woman's photo. The picture usually gets shared to paranormal groups on Facebook asking if anyone can reveal more information about the photograph. In it, we can see a woman taking a photograph of herself out in the middle of some woods. However, in the background, you can see a tall man looking directly at her. Some of the people that saw the image questioned what was standing behind her, with some saying that it doesn't look like she realized she was being watched. One person said that it could be someone who was following her, and as they were approaching she managed to photograph the individual. While others say the person looks like they're trying to dress like the slender man and say that this post is most likely fake. Regardless, there's no shortage of these kinds of photographs. And some have said that when they've snapped the photos, they didn't even realize they were being watched. Over the years, many of these photographs have been shared and it's caused some to come forward and share their own stories. One person said the following about their strange encounter. I remember when I was young, me and my friends would often visit our nearby woods. 
At the time, we were teenagers and we'd always go to the woods a few times a week. We live close to Elfin Forest in California, a place known for mysterious happenings, and although the forest is creepy when it gets dark, we never encountered anything up to this point. I remember that me and my friend headed there one evening when it was still light, and as we made our way to our spot, my friend said she noticed something off into the distance, saying that it looked like a tall man with a hand. When I tried to see what she was talking about though, I couldn't find the strange man. We joked about it saying that it was probably one of the many ghosts that reside within the forest and then we went on to our spawn. After being here for just under an hour, we decided to make our way back as it was getting dark. Just before we left, I was talking to my friend and I noticed that something had caught her attention in the distance and it was obviously something that had troubled her as her face went completely white. Without even turning around, it sent chills at my spine as I'd never seen this happen to anyone before and it was almost like a sixth sense was telling me that we weren't alone. Before she could tell me what she'd locked eyes with, I quickly turned around, and standing around 20 feet from us was a tall man with a hat. I guessed that it was the same person that my friend had seen previously. This person had long arms and a gaunt face, but perhaps the most disturbing thing about this individual is that he had a huge smile on his face. We must have stared at him for at least 20 seconds, and during this time he didn't blink once. He just stood there and stared at us. We got up as quickly as we could and ran out the forest. When I turned around to see where he was, I could see that he was just slowly walking towards us, still smiling at us and not blinking. We got out of there as quickly as we could and didn't really say much on the way home. The encounter gave me chills as this person seemed to have just appeared out of nowhere and something I can't get out of my mind is how creepy the smile was and the way he just slowly walked towards us. We've never gone back to that part of the forest. End quote. Another location that's said to be haunted is that of Dewhill in India. The Dewhill Forest is played by a number of strange supernatural sightings and disappearances. Many locals and tourists alike have reported seeing children running through the forest at night, appearing to be deformed or startling in their appearance. However, these claims have only become more and more popular as many skeptics flock to the site with the hopes of dismissing these claims only to capture a tremendous amount of images and footage of school children running through the forest at night. Oddly enough, the Victoria Boy School located in that region and established in the 1800s it's rumored to be the hotspot for paranormal activity from the forest. There are no faculty members that will work late at the school throughout the night, and janitors and other employees that are forced to work through the night tend to have a high rate of turnover and quit the job. Many students during the day also report footsteps echoing throughout the corridors, doors slamming behind them, and even sightings of ghostly encounters in the locker rooms, with them saying that no one will go to the bathroom alone due to fear of seeing something. Additionally, given the history the scores had when connected to old British expansion, some are theorized that perhaps a darker history took place in the region, giving birth to such paranormal occurrences. Today, the number of strange reports have only grown in the area, with locals saying that it's not uncommon to see mysterious beings with red eyes running through the forest, loud screams that echo from tree to tree, and black shadow figures that suddenly appear in front of you, only to vanish just as quickly as they appear. As the Israelites were making their way across the desert after their capture from Egypt, Moses, with strict orders from God himself, commanded them to construct the infamous Ark of the Covenant. Inside the Ark is home to numerous tablets engraved with the Ten Commandments from the Hebrew Bible that are believed to host magical powers, both good and evil. The tablets are believed to be made of gold from the Garden of Eden, representing the mortality of the universe. Like any biblical story, the truth of the matter is up to interpretation. Scholars who have studied the last Ark of the Covenant have debated whether the Ark is made of gold or wood, what kind of powers it has, and ultimately where it ended up after vanishing from Jerusalem in 587 BC, God gave the Israelites extreme specific instructions for building the Ark of the Covenant according to God, the Ark should be made of both wood and gold. God then instructed the builders to sheath the wood with gold both inside and out. There was to be a cherub facing a certain direction on the lid of the chest, with its wings spread upwards casting a shadow below. To imagine the Israelites wandering through the desert for forty years were expected to create such an artistic masterpiece. With only their hands and some gold is a huge undertaking, even with God's guidance. To make the story more believable to modern people, it's now believed that God chose only one man to be the designer of the ark and gifted him with the skills he would need to complete the task. One of the most popular theories is that the Israelites used the Ark to gain advantages on their way to conquer certain regions. 
Because the Ark was thought to be so powerful and had brought the Israelites such good fortune, it became a hot commodity. It was eventually stolen from the Israelites, but shortly thereafter the thieves were swept with disease and fatal illnesses, causing them to return the Ark immediately. For many years the Ark was lost to history, but according to audio recordings of Ron Wyatt, he claims to have found the Ark inside a chamber. Here's a transcript of the interview. Okay, the recorder's on now, so can you go ahead and basically tell me what happened? On the excavation, therefore, the Ark of the Covenant, primarily I was interested in just the Ark of the Covenant. However, when I did the excavation down the clear face, I ran into cutouts and we ran into cross holes and at the bottom of this ancient quarry showed there was a crucifixion and execution spot. The Romans crucified their people there. The Jews, because of some of their special arrangements with the Romans, they basically stoned people there and beat them as examples. That's what took place there. Anyway, once we found that place, I knew that I needed to get inside that escarpment because there were several indications that it was just a system of tunnels and chambers and that I needed to basically just go to chamber to chamber, tunnel by tunnel. Systematically go through there until I found the Ark of the Covenant or until I didn't find it. And so we found it on January the 6th, 1982 at approximately 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And when I found it, it was in a situation that I'd not anticipated or expected. That was that it was in a chamber that was totally filled with what appeared to be debris and what turned out to be a bunch of materials of furnishings of the first temple. Covered first by animal skins, then that covered by boards, and then covered by stones, just whatever they could get their hands on. It looked as though it had been done in a hurry. It looked like they grabbed everything whatever they could to fill the place, and it was still a little fuzzy on why that would be done, but I don't see why I need to know everything. When God does something, I just know it's done perfectly. On the occasion of my fourth visit, I was going to make another attempt at getting some video footage. At that time, I'd not had any success with any kind of reproduction attempt. This included Polaroid cameras, 35mm cameras, a VHS camera, and video system. So anyway, I went into the chamber and load myself in there. And of course, the thing that became apparent immediately was that the place was totally cleaned. Somebody had done what I decided that I was going to do. That was to clean everything, haul the debris and take everything out and I guess I should say a couple of words here that the Ark of the Covenant was not covered in all the debris like everything else. It was in a separate container within walls and a stone box. This extended from the floor which I didn't know at the time but anyway the box extended up within approximately 3 inches of the ceiling. I would have had to have been there when the cleanup took place in order to know all of that and I simply was not there. But anyway, the Ark of the Covenant, the mercy seat, was in a set manner underneath the crack that came down that extended down from the crucifixion site above and there are several things that are rather remarkable about what happened there. The place was cleaned up and the Ark of the Covenant was just sitting against the wall at the east side of the cave. And the cave is not perfectly oriented east. It's just on the eastern end. Behind this is this crystalline wall that emits the color of the rainbow. End quote. As of right now though, his discoveries and claims have been dismissed by scientists, saying that the Ark of the Covenant has not been found. But amateur researchers believe that Ron did find the Ark and it's now been kept hidden somewhere. Mountains are hard to navigate and this means that many areas on mountains haven't been visited by humans. Every year people venture up these mountains to push themselves and it's said that when you reach the top it's one of the most rewarding things a human can do. However, during many of these hikes people have reported seeing mysterious things and this in turn has inspired many stories and legends. The Himalayas is one location where many strange creatures have been reported. Those who have visited the region of Tibet have been told stories of large humanoid creatures sharing the mountains with humans with the locals saying that these creatures are very much real but try to avoid human contact. These people spent their life on the mountains and they say they're certain about what they're seeing. These large humanoid creatures go by different names. The mountain people, the humanoids, and most famous, the Yeti. The Yeti is described as a giant ape-like creature believed to be found in the Himalayas. Yetis, according to modern-day sightings, are said to stand from 8 to 11 feet tall, have a coat of brown, reddish, or black hair, and are said to resemble a huge upright walking ape. For the last few hundred years, individuals who have ventured to the mountains have reported seeing large humanoids, much larger than modern-day humans. It was reported by those in the region that this area was their home and that anyone who visited this region must respect that these beings were here first. When stories started to spread, it was hard to figure out whether these creatures were actually real or just a type of spiritual being. And this was because some tales would say that if you was ever lost in the mountains, one of these creatures would help guide you back. 
but this doesn't seem to be the case, as many who have visited this region have said they've seen the large humanoids themselves. One local in Tibet said the following about their encounter. Living in the mountains we see and are told stories about things that many wouldn't believe. Most of us have lived here our entire lives and it's allowed us to have a more open approach than people that just visit. We've become accustomed to these conditions and what the mountains offer. We know the paths to take and what lies in the mountains. I know every creature here big and small and my recent encounter was unlike anything I'd ever seen. There has always been talks of great men who live in the mountains and these stories have been passed down by our parents and friends. Our ancestors talked a lot about these creatures and it's common knowledge that we share the mountain with them. Some of my friends have said they've seen them but said that it didn't get close. They keep their distance from us and live deep within the mountainous regions. My friends have said to me that they do not harm humans but they're also not fond of us. On one particular occasion I decided to go for a hike. After trekking for hours I reached a slope and could see something in the distance. At first, I thought it was someone who lived nearby, but as I walked closer, I was able to get a good look at it. I could tell that whatever this thing was, it was tall. In fact, to guess, I would say this creature was around 8 feet in height. It also had a deep brown, reddish fur that surprisingly blended into the snowy backdrop. At this point, I would say the creature was around 60 feet from where I was standing. Although I was aware of the creatures, I never thought that I would encounter one. After observing it for several minutes, it suddenly turned its head towards me. Once I gazed into the creature's eyes, I started to get nervous, as this thing was much taller than me. However, after staring at me for what felt like several minutes, the creature soon went on its way. It's an incredible experience that I'll never forget. End quote. So, what are people seeing? One idea that's been put forward in recent years is that these creatures could just be hermits that live up in the mountains and they're being misidentified as yetis. This would make sense to some degree as living in these conditions would require you to wear a lot of layers and would in turn make you look a lot bigger than you actually are, giving off the illusion of you being a mountain monster. While others have said a long extinct animal could be living in the mountains. For years, Bigfoot and Yeti have been nothing but a creature of legend as there has never been any hard proof of its existence outside of eyewitness reports. However, scientists are now beginning to think they might have an answer for why this supposed mythical creature keeps being reported. Scientists have conducted analysis of the protein structures of two phenomenal fossils of Gigantopithecus, and these are estimated to be two million years old. The Gigantopithecus has been proven for a fact to have once lived on Earth, leaving behind thousands of teeth and four partial jaws that had been discovered in recent years. The fossils proved to be from warm, humid regions believed to be that of Eastern Asia. However, recent teeth found in the swampy regions of the Americas that were thought to be Gigantopithecus have also been analyzed. The tooth enamel protein structure has been found to date back no more than 10,000 years. It's been hypothesized that the Joagandopithecus genome might have split some 12 million years ago. The most common branch devolved into what is known today as the primate family consisting of monkeys, apes, and gorillas. While the second branch of the genome might have evolved into what is known today as Bigfoot and Yetis, while the main branch slowly developed the human-like features that we know today, the second branch is believed to have extended the Joagantopithecus gene, elongating the arms and increasing the height. It's believed that the second dune could have survived this entire time undiscovered. Its large body also helps it inflame before being seen. Some scientists also believe it's within reason that the second species could have divided into many breeds resulting in the black, shorter, smellier breed that would inhabit the swampy areas of Florida and it's been given the nickname of the skunk ape. The taller brown version found in the west closer to the Rocky Mountains and known to be more aggressive and finally the mountain version that lives in the colder areas such as the Himalayas and that has become known as the Yeti. The ocean is one of the last unexplored frontiers. Every year we discover thousands of new species, showcasing how little we know about our oceans. Interestingly, in recent years, people have come forward and detailed some strange things they've encountered while exploring the oceans. And one of these came from a former National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration employee. They posted their story on Reddit. But when you try to view it, it's now being taken down. And this was because the individual gave out personal and specific information that went against the guidelines. I tried to reach out to the individual that posted the story asking if they could put me in touch with the person who told them the story, but they didn't reply even after reaching out multiple times. As of right now, there's those that believe the story and those that think it's just made up. Here's the unedited story. 
I am posting this for an acquaintance that does not meet the Reddit requirements for posting in this sub herself. This is not my information, nor am I in any way related to the situation or any actions taken by her. Everything beyond this point is verbatim her story as provided to me. The Navy has worked in conjunction with the government to keep this quiet on all fronts. Other governments have similar systems in place to keep this information strictly in the realm of fiction according to public perception. I am compelled to break my silence and disseminate this information. My colleagues in the organization I've called home for the past 12 years is responsible for keeping one of the greatest genealogical discoveries of all time quiet. The sector I work in has been restructured and downsized, so I'm going to lose my job in May. This post should expedite that process. I began my career with the redacted office located in Redacted. I hold an MS in Biological Sciences from Redacted and a PhD in Wildlife and Fishery Sciences from Redacted. In 2012, there was an incident of a few beach whales that were investigated by Nawa and a team from the Navy. This was very thoroughly hushed up immediately afterwards. The whales were full of perfectly circular incisions where large chunks of their flesh had been removed, like cylinders of meat essentially. At first we thought this was done after the beaching, but we learned that they washed up this way. What really caught everyone's attention was the seared flesh around the circumference of the incisions as if they were burned out with lasers. We were all baffled as we had never seen anything like this in marine life. Then we got a call informing us that a small team would be conducting a hydrographic survey of the area using the echo sounder of a local vessel. We typically use a technique called multi-beam sonar to scan and map the seafloor in astounding detail. The data we collect is processed by various parties and is usually uploaded to online databases. We were told that this would not be the case for this expedition. Long story short, we found irrefutable evidence of an advanced humanoid species living under our oceans. Using the multi-beam sonar, we found their dwelling areas and also what appears to be underwater vehicles of some kind. The creatures themselves were tracked by the Navy over the course of two weeks using a submersible equipped with special deep-sea observation equipment. The creatures displayed speeds of 70 plus knots, faster than the sailfish which is widely considered to be the fastest creature in the ocean. They were also recorded emitting sounds that resembled marine communications and instruments also captured the emissions of precision sonoblasts that damaged the hull of the submersible. This is according to the Navy report. There is footage of the creatures including juveniles. The Navy did not share the video with us, but an officer I spoke with gave the following description. They don't look real. They look like computer animation or something. They have a glow around their entire body and they move really fast. Like even small movements like turning their head or moving an arm was like watching a high frame rate video. They look nothing like any fictional depiction out there. They do not have a fish tail. They are completely humanoid but extremely thin and tall. Their bodies were covered in a material resembling elemental mercury that looked like it was moving. They were very interested in the submersible and seemed to know that they were being observed as a few times they would swim off and then come back with more creatures. We observed at max five of them at once, varying sizes but otherwise identical in appearance. Their eyes were completely white and there was no visible hair nor any features that implied male or female. No visible ears and their mouths were wide and lipless. We flashed sequences of lights at them, sounds and even extended a robotic arm on the submersible to try and get some kind of physical sample or DNA from the specimens or the water nearest to them. We don't know how they were swimming, as they weren't wading or moving their bodies the way a fish or even a human would underwater. They were capable of just moving rapidly in any direction without the need to change positions or swim. In fact, during the majority of the observations, they were just floating motionless without losing or gaining buoyancy. Now they were also cross-observed via sonar, some very large. They would move faster than anything seen capable of moving underwater. They were not seen or recorded on video just on sonar. They would at times disappear completely while being observed as if they left the water or cloaked themselves. We have two weeks worth of data on just this one area. We were made aware that this is just one spot around the world where these creatures reside hidden from view. A briefing that I was able to read during a meeting indicated that the Mariana Trenches were the largest concentration of these creatures resigned and that they seemed to be completely unaffected by the dem structures believed to be their dwellings units. Have been mapped. They are perfectly hexagonal and joined together like a honeycomb. Their composition is unknown. The Navy confiscated most of the hard evidence. All we have are some sonar readings that are only anomalous if you know what you're looking for. I want everyone to know this information. We are not alone, but they aren't from space. 
In order to exist at these depths and under astronomical pressures, these beings are either invincible or they've evolved so far beyond us that they have some kind of technology that negates both of these dangers. This is actively being covered up by every lettered organization and by our military. Other nations are aware of these beings and I believe some authentic videos may even be mingled in all of the doctor's stuff. The sightings in Kiryat Yam were authentic. We mapped a collection of their dolings of the coast near Cyprus Island. UFO sightings are seen by thousands of people across the world, but for some the encounter doesn't stop after the craft has left the scene. And some individuals that have gone on to detail mysterious encounters days, weeks, and even months after the initial sighting. UFO researchers who have looked into these claims have said that sometimes people can be marked and when this happens it causes them to experience crafts and beings much more frequently than before the initial sighting. This is a subject that eyewitnesses and skeptics don't agree on. Skeptics will say these encounters and subsequent events can be easily explained, and that the majority of the time they have a natural explanation. However, eyewitnesses have said that in some of these cases, these sightings have gone on to change their life. And this is exactly what happened to one person I contacted. She requested that I keep her name private, so to make things easy, I will call her Anna. I saw an interesting post that Anna had put out and she detailed that after experiencing something strange when she was young, she started to notice that strange marks would be left on her body. She said the following, where this all started, my knowledge was during school. When I was in elementary school, I'd have this dream at least twice a month. I would wake up and felt like it happened. In fact, I know it happened. I would go with several other children and families in some sort of bubble-like thing. And we go to this community where there was other children and families was all in a dome of glass. Everything was so colorful and vivid. The domes housed families and there was long stretches that you'd walk on to get to other places. The domes had that iridescent rainbow like bubbles have. I remember there was no sun, only dark sky, but you could see just fine. Like there was sun shining. It was like the light came from underneath. It wasn't a frightening dream. I used to wake up in different parts of the house or on the floor or with my head at the foot of my bed. I still have these overwhelming feelings of being watched, especially at night. Fast forward to now and it started to happen again. The flashes never stop. Flashes of sometimes silver, gold, and purple and blue lights. Waking up exhausted and feeling my heart race and feeling my body shake. My husband says he can feel the bed shake when I'm waking up in the morning. So I know I'm actually shaking. Now these marks have started to appear on my body. I haven't had the marks since I was a child. I don't have a bad or negative feeling about this. I don't think I'm trying to be harm, I now finally have a name for the hole like marks I would get randomly. I call them scoop marks. I always explain them as holes. I have had one on my inner forearm for the longest time. Now I have this one on my forehead. I used to get three small red marks and they look like blood under the skin. The dots formed a perfect triangle. I have had abductions since I was a child and am over it. I want to know what they want. Why me? I'm blood typo negative. So is my husband and children. My husband thinks I'm crazy as he's never had anything like this nor does he believe in it. I've had abductions before but they were never as scary as this one. It started off with me being in this huge sterile building with windows all around. It was nothing but darkness outside. I was walking at first and I felt uneasy but I thought I was just there to visit and look around. It was lots of gray metal, dark blue and white. Think of a hospital but made from glass and metal piping. There were two floors but the top floor only went halfway across. So as I was being led through the building, I peeked up there and saw big lights like operation or dentist lights. And there was also hospital beds. After I saw those, I somewhat panicked. I was then brought to a bed and told that they needed to find something inside me. I don't remember resisting, but I somehow ended up in the bed. The lady that was in charge of me put some kind of small patch on my upper arm and said it will calm me down. I felt myself getting really groggy, but was still conscious. I don't remember the four being hooked up, but I saw it. It was a yellow liquid. She laid on my bed and she must have laid it back too far because my sinuses filled up with a yellow liquid and it started to drip from my nose. I blew it out and it started to feel a little better. She wanted me to sit up and said something out loud, but I couldn't understand her. All along I was being instructed mentally, not verbally. As she was sitting me up I somehow escaped. I remember pulling the four and getting out of bed. I ran to the door of this building and opened the door and woke up in my bed. She has since been confused about these mysterious symbols that appeared on her body. Interestingly, when she shared her story, others said to her that they've had the same thing happen to them and that when they dream of being abducted, they wake up to find these strange markings on their body. 
noting that they only last for a few days before vanishing and leaving a small scar. Due to the markings appearing after having these strange abduction dreams, it's caused some to think that the two events might be linked. Others have said the symbols only appear when they have these strange dreams of being taken into graphs and that when they appear in their body they always seem to be perfect and that it doesn't look like this could form during the middle of the night, as they don't match typical scratches of things like bedbugs. Ancient mind civilization working on their most recent invention. And that structure has something to do with space travel. Our ancestors were obsessed with space, and all over the world these ancient civilizations found ways to observe the cosmos. Why were they interested in space? And what do these carvings show us? In recent years, researchers have been able to find writings that prove that ancient man was interested in the stars. This discovery was made in 1961 in Romania. An engineer discovered a strange-looking manuscript. While looking through the ancient papers, something caught the researchers' attention. It turns out the papers were detailing concepts about rocketry and this existed in a time when these types of things weren't meant to be around. The individual who worked in these designs was a man by the name of Comrade Haas and he lived between 1509 and 1576. Interestingly, although he was able to design these incredible concepts of rocketry, not much is known about his life. But due to the findings by the engineer, this caused scholars and researchers to become much more interested in this man. One of the first things the researchers noticed was that these drawings were very similar to that of the multi-stage rockets. This is complex rocketry and is something that consists of two or more engines that are placed on top of this. This is normally used in rockets that need to reach high altitude. So the question here is why was someone hundreds of years ago trying to create a multi-stage rocket? It turns out that Mr. Comrade Haas was a talented man. The manuscript that was discovered is over 450 pages and hints at Comrade Haas being a master engineer and someone who's looked upon during this era. The manuscript also details artillery and rocket technology. Interestingly, the invention Haas was working on can be found in the manuscript. Comrade Haas was taken on by the military at an unknown time, and some have theorized this was because at the time he would have been one of the most impressive engineers around. Having a good understanding of rocketry in a time where not many people would have understood what it was. It's incredible that someone during this time was even able to come up with the ideas of rockets. And researchers have even said that he's one of the first people to put into writing the concept of multi-stage rockets. Further saying that his concepts were put to test and they did in fact work. Incredibly, his work doesn't stop there. He went on to designing detailed spacecrafts, delta fins, bell nozzles, and even liquid fuel. Being one of the first people to create complex things like this, it begs the question of where he was getting these ideas from. Astronomers have one of the most interesting jobs watching the sky and identifying the vast amounts of objects the universe has to offer. But sometimes an anomaly shows up that needs to be investigated further. One of these strange anomalies was spotted by amateur researchers on the asteroid Itakawa. Hayabusa was a robotic spacecraft developed by the Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency and was created with the sole purpose of traveling to the near-Earth asteroid Itaka. After flying through the cosmos for over two years and eventually landing on the asteroid in 2005, it started to take detailed photographs and carrying out scientific investigations. Interestingly, in some of these images, amateur researchers pointed out a large-looking object on the tip of the asteroid. What's odd is that this seems to have suddenly appeared as in previous photographs it wasn't there. Not many people have seen these photos, but those who have seen them have put forward some interesting explanations. Some can't understand how such a large object just suddenly appeared on the end of the asteroid, or there's some who have said that the object is causing somewhat of an illusion, and that the spherical object isn't actually a dome or an object protruding out of the asteroid, but is actually a crater and was likely created by a piece of debris hitting it. Others though disagree with this and have said that on various asteroids you can see these strange objects. One believer said the following, it's frustrating that when you question these things you're looked at as being crazy. The truth is many of these asteroids show these types of anomalies protruding outwards. I'm not saying it's aliens but I think it should be investigated. End quote. As with the majority of these discoveries, not much information can be gathered from what this photograph shows, leaving amateur researchers to give their opinions on what they think the photograph is showing. NASA said the following about the mission on their website. 
the first mission to return a sample of material from the surface of a near-Earth object, the Japanese Hayabusa spacecraft which also carried a miniature lander named Meneva was originally designed as a technology demonstration mission. One of the technologies it tested was an efficient iron propulsion system which it used successfully during its two-year journey to asteroid Itakawa. On the 25th of September 2005, the Hayabusa spacecraft touched down on the surface of the asteroid Itakawa, marking only the second time in history that a spacecraft has descended to the surface of an asteroid. End quote. Amateur researchers have said this is just one in a long line of discoveries that have been made outside of our planet. One of the most interesting planets is that of Mars. With it being in our solar system and also being so close to us in terms of space, scientists have been carrying out various tests and even sending advanced rovers and satellites to map the terrain. This has given scientists a much better understanding of its environment and what else happens here on a day-to-day -day basis. However, various photographs that have been sent back over the years have only caused more confusion about what's really going on. As various amateur researchers have suggested there could be life on Mars. Whilst NASA and other space agencies have made it clear about their stance of alien life on Mars, they've come forward and said that at this moment there is strong evidence to suggest that water is on Mars, and that this is through the discoveries of hydrated salts and eskines. However, water in liquid form is yet to be discovered or confirmed. A lot of evidence and research points to the existence of water on Mars, such as the findings of the European Mars Express. This craft using an advanced radar system known as Mars's found that Mars's south pole holds a subsurface anomaly that strongly suggests that an entire lake, thought to be around 12.4 miles or 20 kilometers across and at least one meter deep is underneath the pole. Very recent evidence has found that there is certain places on Mars which could potentially hold liquid water given the perfect conditions. The reason that ice water is plentiful on Mars but currently there's no evidence of liquid water is because Mars' atmosphere is incredibly thin. So as soon as any ice would melt it would immediately turn to vapor. Back in 2000, someone discovered something strange in a photograph sent back from Mars. The photograph in question has since become known as the Tower and is used by people to prove that there are or once were beings living on the Red Planet. At the time when the images was public, many people downloaded it and conducted various tests to try and find out more. What they discovered was this object was massive. Not only that, but it was very consistent with buildings we see here on Earth. This caused some to suggest that what we're looking at is some type of massive building. Those who have carried out measuring techniques suggested that it measures 3.9 miles or 6.3 kilometers. This only caused more confusion as how could such a massive skyscraper-like object form naturally? To further back up this claim, those who discovered the object point to the massive shadow that can be seen being casted behind it, proving that whatever this is, it's big enough to cause a shadow. It's important to note as well that this photograph was taken by the Mars Orbiter Surveyor. This was launched on the 7th of November 1966. It had taken years to build this incredible piece of equipment but it's noted by NASA as being the first successful mission to the Red Planet in over 20 years. The orbiter finally reached the Red Planets back in March of 1999, where it would go on to map the terrain from low altitude. Since this date, it sent back thousands of images, interestingly, many of which haven't been studied by researchers or scientists, and which some say do hide interesting anomalies that could help us to understand the planet's environment. This early surveyor was able to tell scientists a lot about Mars' surface, environment, atmosphere, and interior. The camera that was on the Mars orbiter was able to send back some incredible images that would help us to understand how we would approach the planet in the future when it came to missions. Although humans have done a great job at exploring various regions on our planet, two that are still relatively unknown are that of the oceans and jungles. Today, researchers are still finding evidence of lost civilizations under the dense jungle growth, helping to give us an insight into previously unknown artifacts. Today, things like cloud technology is being used to help us navigate our way through these clustered regions. With scientists saying that this technology is helping us to uncover worlds we previously didn't know existed. For example, back in 2018, over 60,000 mine ruins were uncovered in Guatemala. To give you an idea of how dense the jungles is in this area, one archaeologist stated that one of the finds was made within 150 feet, but due to the thick vegetation they never spotted it. It's not just lost civilizations and artifacts that line beneath our world's jungles. 
Various unknown species of animals are still being discovered today, with researchers saying that every year thousands of new species are being discovered, showing us that there's still much to learn about our natural world. Then there's reports made by people who allegedly encounter creatures known as cryptids. These are animals that are not recognized by science, with some of the most famous ones being that of Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monster. One interesting crypt here that's said to reside deep within the Congo is that of the Mkali Membi. Due to the amount of strange creatures reported from this region, it's led some to name this location as Earth's real-life Drass Park. The Mekali Bembi, when translated, means the one who stops the flow of rivers. It's a mysterious creature that's been mentioned in different stories by the people who live in the Congo River Basin. These people have the most contact with this creature and are said to have encountered it many times. Mekali Bembi is often described as a half-dinosaur, half-elephant and is claimed by people to live in Lake Teli near the Congo River in Africa. No scientific proof has been found that such an animal ever existed, but that hasn't stopped various reports coming onto this area. It's used as a reference by some researchers to prove that dinosaurs and humans coexisted or that dinosaurs somehow managed to survive in the modern day. Michelle Bembi has been described as an elephant-sized creature with smooth, brownish-gray skin, a long, flexible neck, and a long tail that's as powerful as a crocodile's tail. It's perhaps best known for leaving behind its large footprints, which are known for having three claws and leaving deep impressions in the ground. These can be found throughout the swampy jungles of Africa. Over the past three centuries, native pygmies and western explorers have described how the creature used to live. This animal fed on the nuts-like fruit of a riverbank plant and kept the deep pools and subsurface areas, like the caves underwater and the unexplored regions of the forest. A recent expedition has shown that these stories have been told for a long time and that the locals very much believe that this creature is real and not a myth. One of the researchers on the team said that it may have been a dinosaur like Brontosaurus, which modern science says has been extinct for 17 million years. The same researcher, Roy Mackle, had gone deep into the central swamps of the Congo, where it was believed that the animal lived. Interestingly, he was able to come back with a photograph of a footprint that's believed to belong to the Makilai Bembi. The Forbidden Swamp region is located at the center of the Congo, and it covers an average area of 49,000 square miles, which is as large as New York. The natives told the missionaries where the Seropo dinosaur lived after the missionaries had shown them the animal. They had known about the mysterious animal that lived alongside the rivers and inside the deep pools but did not know that it was a sauropod dinosaur until the missionaries told them. This dinosaur-like creature is said to feast on the vegetables and fruits of the jungles. One thing that's noted is that it doesn't get along with hippos and various tribe members have seen these two animals battle it out. In 1999, Sunday, Toms of London reported that the people of the Kabanga tribe had managed to take down one of these creatures. Once captured, it was reported that the tribe killed it. In the fall of 1981, Herman Reducitors led a team to Lay Italy, and it's said they returned with items belonging to this ancient creature. This included things like footprint cars, droppings, and a mysterious sound which couldn't be pinned to any of the local wildlife. Reports of Michelebem go way back to the 18th century, and since 1980, over 25 expedition teams have been sent in search for the mysterious animal. In 2018, another expedition was sent with DNA experts to look for clues for the creature. They found nothing that could help them track down the animal, but interestingly, they did discover a new kind of algae. Some have said there's still many creatures and organisms on this planet that we don't know about. Discover Africa purchased a documentary from an independent young crew in 2016. The documentary showed how the crew spent four weeks gathering information from different tribes and this was with the sole purpose of trying to find the existence of such an animal. Numerous natives believed in its existence, while some said the last of the species had died out at least a decade ago. Gathering evidence of this creature has been tough. The tribe native to the Congo region that reported the creature claimed to have hunted them down, further saying they wanted to eradicate them from the area due to their growing fears, its aggression and its history of attacks. The last reported sighting of the creature was in Kenya, though many experts believe that if the creature did at one time exist, then it's long been extinct for a few thousand years given the lack of fossil record. However, the tribe reported that the last of the creatures to be killed was back during the 1930s, with claims about a man that removed the horn from the body of the creature and holds it in his possession. This man, however, has not come forward with the horn due to fears it will be taken away. 
Further information about the creature has not been released and the only reliable information to be found on it is that of the evidence and work gathered by Dr. Roy P. Magill, who describes the creature in his 1987 publication of his book, A Living Dinosaur. With that being said, locals still talk about the creature and to this day stories are still coming out of this region. One of the most interesting things about this report is that the locals didn't know it was a dinosaur and were not educated in dinosaurs. They weren't going around claiming that dinosaurs were still alive, but rather describing a creature they'd seen on numerous occasions. It wasn't until the guides and researchers explained to them that dinosaurs were no longer alive that they understood why they were so interested. Regardless, they didn't tell them this information until after they had drawn the image. The image in question was drawn when researchers asked them what the creature looked like. This drawing included a large, bulky body, a long neck, and a long tail. It also had large sauropod-like fiends. After this drawing and after talking to the locals, this only caused more confusion. The team of researchers were hoping to go to the region and easily explain what the natives were seeing. It was thought that what the tribe was encountering was local wildlife. However, one of the tribe members said they know the local wildlife and they wouldn't confuse it with this creature. Ferva saying that this animal has been in this region for many years and that the people don't like to disturb it. Some of the best evidence we have of this creature are those of the giant footprints, which are known for having three claws and leaving deep impressions in the ground. Various locals have reported finding these in the region and say they can't match them to any of the local wildlife. The reports of finding these tracks follow a similar theme. A local or an expedition stumble across large tracks that usually measure around 40 to 95 centimeters, or 1.5 to 3.5 feet in diameter. The creature's footprints are also spread out, showing researchers that this creature is big. It's not just the Michelle Bemby that's been reported from this region. Another creature that's feared by the locals is that of the Amalintica. The Amalintica is said to be a hostile creature and has allegedly been witnessed harming the local wildlife. The locals of the Congo have given this creature the nickname of the Elephant Killer. It's said to be very ferocious and will take on anything that gets in his way. It's been observed taking down the larger creatures that live in this region. And what's interesting is the tribes have said you can't find large animals where this creature lives. They say this is because they don't want to go near the Amalintica. Because if they do, they will be taken down on the spot. The Amalintica is claimed to be around the size of an African bush elephant, brownish to gray in color with a heavy tail. Early reports gave detailed accounts of this creature using its tail to take down its prey. Humans would also have to keep their distance as the creature had a great eyesight and could see prey coming from a long way away. Those who have seen this creature have described it as having a bulky body and stumpy legs. The color of the creature varies depending on who you talk to, but most say it's gray. Interestingly, the Amalintica spends the majority of its time underwater. Tribes over the years have fit going into the water in case they encounter this creature. It doesn't like to be disturbed and when you get too close to it, you can hear it uttering a low vocalization. From drawings and descriptions by the locals, the Amalintica seems to resemble a type of dinosaur. Although some have suggested it's a descendant of the Triceratops. Others have suggested it's an aquatic rhinoceros. Cryptozoologists have said it's one of the most interesting cryptids out there, mainly because it's been witnessed by so many people. Over the last 10 years, there have been some eyewitness testimonies about this creature. How true they are is another question. Explorers who have seen the creature have said it looks like a rhino, but with a much larger horn and a darker colored body. They say it's more hostile than a typical rhino and doesn't like it when you venture too close. They are said to come out for only a few hours of the day, and depending on who you are, some have suggested it's actually a herbivore feasting on the dense plants that scatter the Congo. Question that many people are left with is what is this creature? The locals are perhaps some of the best people to talk about the local wildlife. After all, they're the ones that spent the most amount of time in this region. They seem to be under the impression that this creature resembles that of a small sauropod, a large dinosaur that lived millions of years ago. Even going on to say that every so often they discover large footprints that they attribute to the beast. Skeptics point out that how could such a large creature live in this region without being detected? It's reported to be anything from 20 to 40 feet in length so this creature wouldn't be hard to miss also. If this creature is real there would have to be a big enough population to keep themselves going every year it seems that scientists have been finding the existence of long thought to be extinct species. Some of these include marine animals that were roaming the oceans back during the time of the dinosaurs. For example, one of these is known as the coelacanth. 
This creature was swimming around in our oceans hundreds of millions of years ago. As scientists said, they became extinct around 80 million years ago. But in 1938, a living coelacanth was discovered in the Indian Ocean, near the southern coast of Africa. Incredibly, these creatures have been living since the time of the dinosaurs. With this much evidence gathered by the scientific community, it's no surprise then that it appears there are large stories involving the existence of real-life encounters with ancient creatures even in the modern day. It's creatures like the coelacanth that has led some to believe that there's a small possibility that the creature is out there. After all, unless we've searched every region of the Congo, we can't say for sure that the creature doesn't exist. Skeptics will tell you there's no way such a large creature exists and that by now we should have more evidence of it. Perhaps time will tell whether we're able to track down more evidence of this creature. Maybe it's a new undiscovered species that's not yet known to science. After all, thousands of new species are discovered every year. So perhaps it's just a matter of time before we make a breakthrough in this case. Every day people spot mysterious things and one place where strange photographs have been taken is that of public transport. Going back a few years ago, someone posted this photograph along with this caption. A passenger riding alone on an NYC bus was minding their own business when they began to hear strange growling noises coming from the right side of them. They looked across the bus and discovered that they were far from alone. If you look in the window, you can see the reflection of this creepy-looking man, except it is completely different and appears to be looking over his shoulder. Could this be a demonic possession? End quote. The photograph soon started to make the rounds on social media with people giving their opinions on what the man was doing. Some suggested that the individual could have been on something, while others said that the individual was possessed. One user said the following, I've seen some comments that this photograph is photoshopped or that this is a mask, but I don't think this is the case. I've been on this transport system which is thought to be close to Chicago and I can tell you there's some really strange individuals you come across. I certainly wouldn't like to be on there during the night time. When I first saw this image, it gave me nightmares. I just hope the person got out of there okay. End quote. Well, another person said the following. That looks like the CTA bus here in Chicago. There's a bunch of crazies who take the bus at night. End quote. Well, this person said the following. I'm pretty sure the person in this photograph is on something. You can see their reflection in the mirror, so I'm sure that this isn't fake. End quote. Others went with the idea that this individual looks possessed, and although that sounds like a joke, possession is something that gets taken very seriously. Ghosts, spirits, angels, demons, and many other such paranormal entities have captivated the minds of humans. For years we have heard stories about these mysterious entities, and a few of us have even experienced them firsthand. Despite all of the advancements made in science and technology, and despite scientists being able to unravel some of the most complex mysteries in the universe, it seems that we have completely skipped over one particular field of study. It's the study of the paranormal. Many ancient civilizations studied paranormal activities, ways of interacting with different paranormal entities, and harnessing their power for the greater good. It's believed that some of the ancient civilizations had mastered the art of real magic and they not only cast extremely effective spells but learned to harness this power. Not only that, but it's said they were also able to summon some of the most powerful paranormal entities. However, our civilization seems more inclined towards technology and things that can be explained according to the various laws of science. But from time to time, different paranormal entities seem to give a hint of their presence and those who have witnessed their powers will back up these claims. A possession is described as someone who has an entity that has taken over their body. This allows the entity to control this person how they please, playing with their physical body as well as their emotions. Although it sounds like stories, possessions to this day are still reported. Science has taken a stance on this and has said it usually happens to people that have problems and that the brain is not healthy in the individuals that experience this. Then there's the other side that states the possessions are very much real and needs to be taken more seriously. A man by the name of Maurice living in Warren, Massachusetts was famously known for having one of the most abnormal demonic possessions ever recorded in the 1980s. The story about Maurice goes back to when he was a boy growing up with a father who didn't love him and had to endure gruesome work on the farm for long hours each day. Over the passing years, his father became more violent towards his son, switching temperaments between anger and neglect, and Maurice sought to move away from his father as any growing child would. Maurice, wanting a better life for himself, began to seek from any means he could, going as far as asking Satan to lend him a helping hand. It was on one of these days that he experienced a strange event at the farm's barn. 
The details of the event were never fully disclosed, but it had to do with a ritual involving love and Maurice was made to participate in it. Not long after he began to notice changes in him from his strength exceeding a fully grown man's to having knowledge of things he'd not been taught. It was not until 1985 that the town began to notice several strange things happening to Maurice, from blood randomly appearing on him or his home to fire breaking out, and cases of Maurice appearing in more than one place at a time. Many people were witness to the happenings, including a police officer. Ed and Lorraine Warren, the famous paranormal investigators, were brought in and were able to resolve the case. This was when they realized the situation was that of a possession rather than a usual haunting. They summoned Bishop Robert McKenna, who conducted the exorcism ritual. They were successful with the exorcism. However, Ed Warren almost lost his life in the process. Maurice was able to make a reasonable sum of money from the damage caused by the farm by the demons. Religion is a complicated thing for some and a healing or support process for many. It's not right or wrong to be religious and it's okay to believe in whatever you want to believe in. For those who are skeptical, however, the darker side of religion can and has had unintended consequences. It's caused some to be extra careful when doing certain activities like exploring an alleged haunted house or going to a location that's said to harbor spirits. Many people across the world believe that something happens after you pass and that in some cases certain individuals don't pass over and are left wandering this world tormenting certain individuals for their pleasure. Perhaps one day we'll be able to close the chapter on the paranormal but with an increase in cases it seems that this day won't be anytime soon. The United States has one of the strongest military presences in the world. Figures show that in 2019 alone, the United States spent around $718.6 billion U.S. dollars. Interestingly, this is actually a decrease when compared to 2010, in which it's estimated that the U.S. spent over $849.8 billion on the military. It's not surprising then that with these types of numbers, some have suggested the U.S. has some secret programs. With a budget like this, they can afford the very best to ensure that their military is one of the strongest. This has caused a variety of theories to suggest that the U.S. will do whatever is necessary to ensure they come out on top. Every couple of months or so this photograph starts to make the rounds on social media. It's normally suggested that the photo shows a real-life giant that's being used by the U.S. military and this could be a new type of super soldier that would give the U.S. an advantage on the battlefield. As with the majority of these photographs, tracking down information on it has proven difficult. The photograph shows several military officials looking at and patrolling a building. But one thing that's noticeable is that this individual looks much taller than the other soldiers. The majority of the men look average size ranging from 5 to 6 feet. But the taller man that can be seen looks to be around 7 to 8 feet, with some suggesting that they may even be taller. It's these types of photographs that get used to back up theories that the United States military is using giants and that they're only used during special operations to ensure they don't get seen. Others have said these large soldiers have been found in other photographs and again, estimations put these individuals at being between 7 to 8 feet in height. There are also theories that have been spread that these soldiers have been created in lamps. Although this idea may sound familiar, this idea is actually based on facts. Steve Rogers may come to mind when we put forward this idea. U.S. officials have said they're working on programs that could see super soldiers become a reality within the next 30 years. The Defense Department's Biotechnologies for Health and Human Performance have been vocal about the idea of creating the ideal super soldier of the future. The group is studying and looking at future tech that will be able to enhance human biological abilities across many areas. These include things like enhancing the soldier's vision, hearing, and muscular control. They said the following about the process. Technology is exhilarating and we're entering the fourth industrial revolution. This biological revolution. To some extent, we've already seen the integration of man and machine over many years. In the use of pacemakers. To some extent, we already see mankind become more intimate with technology. End quote. It said this will only become more apparent in the next few years. One person said the following, I'm interested and worried to see what this new super soldier of the future looks like. It's important to remember that we currently have things like performance enhancements that can take the average human and make them much faster and stronger than before. And this whole process can be achieved within a few months. Whatever the U.S. military is working on must make these enhancements look insignificant. Perhaps it's already happened and perhaps in some parts of the world these super soldiers have already been deployed. 
This isn't something they'd want to be open about as they'd want to have the edge over other militaries. End quote. Going back to the photograph, I've said it's some of the best proof we have of advanced soldiers. While some offered an explanation as to why the soldier is so big, they said the following, I think what's happening here is that the soldier is closest to the camera than the other soldiers. So it gives off the illusion that he's actually much bigger than what he is. End quote. Others noted that it looks as though the tall soldier is on the same level as the others. The majority of those who have seen this photograph has said it's still a mystery. Recent announcement by the U.S. Navy has got people talking. Glowing orbs is a phenomenon that's been witnessed all across the world. These glowing orbs come in a variety of different colors ranging from blue, red, orange, yellow, pink, silver, green, and black, and most people who've seen them have said they appear to pulsate and fly at extremely fast speeds. It's not known what they are, but some have linked them to the UFO phenomena. It's important to remember that a UFO is an unidentified flying object and does not mean the object in question is alien in nature. It's only been in recent years that people have connected the two. It seems though that the U.S. Navy may be taking some inspiration from these objects as they recently come forward and announced that they'll be trying to create phantom images of aircrafts. This is so that enemies and things like heat-seeking missiles will be put off. The U.S. Navy has patented technology to create these images and it's thought they will be created with infrared technology. The U.S. may be able to in the near future create their own phantom images. One of the issues that the military has faced is being able to protect military aircraft from enemy missiles. Various ideas have been put forward in the past and although some have helped, none have been able to stop these attacks. The system has been described as the following. There can be multiple laser systems mounted on the back of the air vehicle with each laser system generating a ghost image such that there would appear to be multiple air cross present. End quote. Interestingly, this is cool some to say that the U.S. has already been using this tank and this could be behind some UFO sightings that have been reported. UFO sightings have been reported for many decades now and although the majority of them get explained, there's some that remain unsolved. Others suggested this idea came to officials when they were investigating UFOs and their capabilities. It's a known fact that for years government officials have been interested and have studied unidentified flying objects, and perhaps this gave them the incentive to try and replicate what these crafts were able to do. Every year, thousands of people report strange things in our sky. Sometimes they get investigated, and the majority of them get explained as everyday things such as planes, flares, helicopters, natural phenomena, blimps, wildlife, or even camera anomalies. Reports show that in 2018, there was over 3,700 reports of unidentified flying objects, and in 2019, there was over 6,800 reports. With some saying this is just a rough estimate and only the ones that got reported saying that it's likely thousands of more UFOs were seen by people across the planet. The most recent one that's making the rounds is the strange object that was seen above Mexico. Residents have reported that a large black structure was seen hovering in the sky while other residents said the object came through what appeared to be a portal. As with the majority of these types of sightings, different theories were put forward to explain what was seen. One woman called Veronica detailed that the object was large and that it was hard to see what shape it was. She went on to say that the object in question made no noise and that it was easy to see because of how big it was. Others carried on with this and said they saw the craft come through what looked like a portal. However, not everyone agreed with the statement and said that it just suddenly appeared. Once the photograph was posted on social media, other people came forward and said they'd seen something similar. One person named Rose has stated they'd seen objects that looked similar to this one, noting that they're normally quite big and seen during the nighttime. They said this is the first time they've seen one of these crass photographs during the daytime. One of the toughest things with these types of sightings is trying to track down who took the original photographs. I spoke with one person who claimed they saw something similar a few weeks before this photo was shared. They said that at the moment Mexico has been a hotspot for UFO sightings and that the media there isn't really covering the large amount of UFOs that have been reported by residents. He went on to say that he's not sure why they aren't being covered, but that there's definitely something strange going on. He states that one of the most commonly sighted things here is strange glowing orbs that are seen during the night, saying that they can be seen flying around in the night sky at fast speeds. Something interesting that he noted was that he's seen black helicopters approach these orbs, but whenever the helicopters get close, they just suddenly shoot up and vanish. It's interesting to note that black helicopters are often seen in areas when unidentified flying objects have been seen. 
and as of right now, no one is sure where these appear. It's been suggested by some UFO researchers that black helicopters are part of a secret program that investigates UFOs. Eyewitnesses who have seen them have said they don't have any markings on the side and are usually completely blacked out. The military have denied this and have said there's no branch or secret project that is flying around in black helicopters. One location that's shrouded in mystery is that of the Popocatapetl volcano. The Popocatapetl is an active strata volcano which can be found in central Mexico and the name of it translates to Smoky Mountain. This is fitting as the volcano is quite active. However, over the years it's been making the news for a different reason. Various webcams are pointed towards the volcano which gives users a good view of it from the safety of their home. But it's not just ash, plumes and clouds that have been witnessed around this volcano. Many people have said they've witnessed unidentified flying objects. These aren't just stories either. People have managed to take photographs and screenshots of the objects while above the volcano. Interestingly, the most commonly shaped objects that are seen are the disc and cigar. However, various other shapes have been seen and this has caused UFO researchers to label this place as a UFO hotspot. What's strange though is that these unidentified crafts are not just seen above the volcano, but they've also been observed flying directly into the volcano and then back out again. This has caused UFO researchers to suggest that something may be going on inside the volcano itself. The most recent one was captured on a webcam on the 20th of April in 2020. The object in question appears to be a glowing orb. These are often reported by people worldwide and they are known for being difficult to photograph as they just appear as glowing objects and don't really show up well on the webcams. Due to the vast amounts of reports around this volcano that all seem to match up with this begs the question of what these objects are and why they're so interested in this volcano. No other volcano on our planet is more active than this one in terms of having strange objects flying in and around it. However, researchers monitoring the volcano released this following statement. We've reported that each day during the 17th and 23rd of March, there were 74 to 182 steam and gas emissions from the volcano, some of which contained minor amounts of ash. An explosion at 10 past 10 on the 17th of March ejected materials onto the flanks and produced an ash plume that rose 1.2 kilometers above the crater rim and drifted southeast. Minor ashfall was reported in the region during the 17th and 18th of March. Some emissions were accompanied by material ejected out of the crater between 10 and 11, and this was on the 18th of March. An explosion at 7 on the 19th of March ejected material a short distance from the crater. On the 22nd of March, an ash plume rose 1 kilometer and drifted south and ejected materials on the flanks at a distance of 800 meters from the crater. The alert level remained at yellow, which is phase 2 middle level colored on a 3 color scale. Others have said these objects could be a natural phenomena like ball lightning. Ball lightning is the strange occurrence of when the conditions appear to be just right and the static discharge of a normal thunderstorm creates what appears to be a floating ball of pure lightning. Not only do these strange unexplained instances of ball lightning create an unexplainable perfect spherical shape, but they also appear to move erratically through the sky and have often been mistaken as alien encounters. Many don't buy this and suggest that there's something far more mysterious going on at this volcano. A psychic is described as someone who has the ability to give information about the past and present. It's for this reason that many have gone to these individuals in times of need. We've all heard of stories of someone who went to a psychic and although many of these people that went for a session were initially skeptical, the information the psychic revealed to them quickly led to them becoming a believer. It's for this reason that some have said that this profession should be taken seriously and that not anyone can just do what these people do. The belief here is that these individuals are born with something special that allows them to make these detailed readings. Whether you believe in it or not, there's many that do and it's down by the fact that not everything in life can be easily explained. Each psychic is different. There's some that claim to be able to read the future of your relationships. While others say they're able to do things such as travel outside of this plane, connect with light beings, and even predict the future through a variety of visions that have come to them. One lady who referred to herself as Rose said the following, I have been a psychic my whole life. When I was young, I started to have visions and the majority of them eventually came true. This led to me researching what this meant and how I was able to make these predictions. I was taken on by a mentor who taught me to control these visions and since then it's allowed me to connect with people on a much deeper level and in some cases it's even helped me save their life. 
For example, I met a client that told me they had a bad feeling that something was going to happen in their life and that they felt as though they had no control over it. When I sat down with them and gathered all the details, I knew it would only be a matter of time before I would have a vision. Six days later, it happened. I could see that the man was walking into a barn where there was dozens of large barrels and as he approached, one blew up and ended up taking his life. I called him immediately and told him not to visit the barn due to the barrels being a hazard. He hadn't even told me about this but said he wouldn't go to the barn that evening. It turns out that deciding not to go may have saved his life as that night there was a large explosion at the barn. It's these types of stories that have made me feel like I have some sort of power. My latest vision was one that revolves around current events happening right now. I was shown a world where the majority of our freedom was taken from us but it was done in such a way that it happened slowly and without people realizing. This came in the form of taking our freedom from us. The timeline that played out in front of my eyes was a worrying one. This year will cause fear, grief, and desperation for many, and things don't seem to get any better. One thing that kept coming up in the vision was seeing people have small objects placed inside their hand. The only way I can describe this is that it looked like a small microchip. The next thing that stood out to us, they will no longer be a middle class. Instead, the future would just consist of rich people and people in the poverty line. This will cause even more division than there currently is and will involve the government pushing for further restrictions. I'm not someone that believes in outlandish theories and I really hope this is a vision that doesn't come true. But I'm just worried as many of my visions in recent years have come true. End quote. Skeptics though don't believe in these claims and say that pretty much anyone can make these types of announcements that aren't based on facts. With one skeptic saying the following, for me the whole idea of being able to tell the future is based on a lie. One of the issues with these types of people is that every so often they might make a claim that does eventually come true. And then those who are naive will take this as fact and believe that this person has supernatural abilities. It's easy to see how the idea of someone possessing superpowers is flawed. If you make enough predictions at some point, one of them is going to sting. End quote. However, there's others who have said that psychics have told them specific details about their life that no one else would know about. And it's for these reasons they believe that some people in this world do possess some sort of power. Many people have heard of Nostradamus, the 16th century French astrologer who was able to see into the future, subsequently predicting many major world events. Although he died over 500 years ago, the modern world has its very own 20th century Nostradamus, and this was in the form of a lady from Bulgaria. Her name was Babavanga. She would eventually become known as the Prophet of the Balkans. She was raised in Stromager, a village resting at the foot of a volcanic mountain range in what was then the Ottoman Empire. She lived an ordinary life for the first 12 years of her life. However, a free tornado that tore through her village changed that. She was caught by a powerful gust of wind and thrown high into the air. Once she reached the ground, she was then trapped for days underneath the rubble and dust. It was here that the little girl experienced her first vision and she had realized she had been given the ability to predict the future. This would be at the cost of her eyesight and so while she lost the sight of the present, she seemingly gained sight of the future. Claiming her abilities had something to do with the presence of invisible creatures that gave her information about future occurrences. Hundreds of predictions were made by Bhavavanga, many of global significance. Some of them speak of humans turning into cyborgs, live robots, animals becoming half-humans, a new religion, new signals from space, and even an artificial sun that uses nuclear energy. China has recently made headlines as being the first to land a probe on the dark side of the moon. The spacecraft has taken photos of the moon's far side before, but no lander has ever touched down there. This venture could prove that China is going to be a leading power in space exploration alongside the US and Russia. China is now the first nation to land on the side of the moon facing away from Earth. On board the Changfu, there is a robotic rover. Its job will be to explore the terrain for future missions. This mission was no easy task. Experts working on the mission have said that one of the issues they had was communication with the Earth. This is because no one had been sent to this part of the moon before. So this was all new territory. Interestingly, during the mission, the rovers were able to capture some interesting images. And one that was sent back allegedly showed a strange anomaly in the background that people couldn't explain. The photograph shows the moon's terrain. However, in the background, people said you can see what looks like a large disk. Once this reached UFO groups, people started to speculate about what this object was, with some saying that it looked like a mound, while others said it resembles the iconic disc UFO. The idea of UFOs being seen on the moon is not anything new. 
This idea has been shared for years, with people saying that even astronauts have talked about this, saying that while walking on the moon they could see strange objects flying around them. In fact, some astronauts even came forward and detailed their encounters, saying that whatever these crafts were, it was like they were keeping a close eye on them all the time they were on the moon. It's for this reason that when these types of images come to light, some suggest that it could be the real deal. One user said the following, one of the most common places to see unidentified crafts is actually that of our moon. Every year, hundreds of videos are taken that show strange crafts around our moon. What's great about this image, though, is that we rarely see things on the actual surface. For me, I think this is one of the more credible photographs we have of UFOs being present on the moon. End quote. Others carried on from this and said that perhaps those monitoring the images didn't realize anything had been captured. There's others, though, who've gone on to say they think the image just shows a natural formation, or that it could be a case of pareidolia. This is when our minds are tricked into thinking that something is there when it isn't. UFO believers have said, though, this is only used to discredit those who find these types of anomalies and say that the image provided is very clear and definitely shows something resting on the moon. In recent years, there has been a special interest in the dark side of the moon. This popular term refers to the fact that the same physical half of the moon is always facing Earth, which in turn means that there's a dark side. This side, however, has been at the center of many claims, most of which include that there's either bases or strange things going on there. One idea is that on this side of the moon, humans have managed to build large alpos, and one of the reasons they did this is because this part of the moon is always facing away from Earth, meaning they could carry out whatever they wanted without getting caught. There's others who have speculated that governments didn't want to go to the dark side of the moon and this is because they may have been warned not to go there. As interesting as these claims are, at this moment in time they're just theories. But UFO researchers have said that with these types of images it helps to back up their claims that something strange is happening on the dark side of the moon. NASA have recently come forward and spoken out about the strange crafts seen in and around the moon. They said the following. Most commonly, UFO claims are due to perfectly natural flaws or artifacts in our publicly available data. Some of the things that people are seeing are planets, cosmic rays, software glitches, and debris. End quote. Another NASA official said the following, the majority of these alleged UFO sightings can be easily explained. One of the things that people see is space debris that's made its way in front of the cameras. When these pieces of debris are up close, it can look like an unidentified flying object. In reality, people are just seeing a common piece of space debris. End quote. One of the most recent announcements to come from the mission was that another Chinese rover had discovered a strange gel-like substance. At the time, it wasn't known what the gel was, causing various people to put forward their theories. However, it's now been announced by scientists that they figured out what the substance was. It turned out that the gel comes from the many rocks that can be found on the surface. Scientists went on to say that this gel-like substance was locally created when rocks melted together. This could have happened when a meteorite struck the surface of the moon, causing a massive amount of heat to melt the surrounding rocks. The strange gel was discovered back in July of 2019. Chinese officials stated that this find was strange, as you don't normally find something like this on the moon. Photographs soon started to make the rounds which showed a part of the moon that looked glossy. Scientists then said that after more detailed photographs were sent back, it backed up their theory that this substance was created by immense heat. This research was published in the Earth and Planetary Science Letters. It seems that China isn't stopping anytime soon. They announced that by 2030 the first Chinese astronauts will be setting foot on the moon. This is only the beginning for the Chinese space program as they are planning to build their own space station by 2022. So what do you guys make of this interesting photograph? Do you think it shows an unidentified flying object resting on the lunar surface? Or do you think this is a case of pareidolia? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comments section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.